Thank you, DJ As One. What's good, everybody? DJ Geometrics here, and we're back again on this Thursday night with the nine at nine. The only show on the internet with nine DJs on the Brady Bunch panel yeah. discussing today's DJ related subject matters. So, <laughs> point at your neighbor. <laughs> so, this show is presented by Beat Refinery DJ School at Bach to Rock. If you want to learn how to mix, scratch, and make music, visit us at beatrefinery.com. Uh, on to Onto tonight's agenda, we have as one is going to do his give us the DJ tip of the week. Sean Jay is going to give us the tech tip of the week, and finally, the main topic for tonight, we'll be talking to DJs who tour with major label artists and get their insight on what the future holds for concerts and shows. So, as always, let me introduce my crew, the rest of the hosts. We have DJ as one, <laughs> our okay. music man. Thanks for uh, having me. Or Next up, we I'm have Sean yeah. Jay. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> what up, what up, what up? Thanks to all the guests, man. Thank you guys for coming. And finally, we have Stylist Chris. What's up, y'all? What's up? All right, Chris, go ahead and take it away. Yo, thank you guys again. This is the third installment of the 9 at 9. We have been having a lot of fun with these shows, getting various DJs from all over the, the, map, the whole map to come through and, and talk either some fun, some real, some getting open, just 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 really vibing out and letting letting the world the dj world especially know what is going down um we're really excited this week to to bring a a really well-rounded crew of guys some guys that i know personally some guys that i just admire from afar um the first one i want to give a, a extra special shout out to he's a he's a brother of mine we we kind of we run a club together we book clubs together uh in dc at heist he is uh I've been a professional DJ for 20 years. 15 of those have been spent as international pop star Sean, uh, Jay Sean's tour DJ. He's traveled to work countless times, exposed to a wide range of global sounds that can be heard in his sets. Bix is most notably known to DJ events performing in front of 100,000 people in Dubai, performing on the Ellen Show, and most recently DJing the private birthday party for Michelle Obama. That's kind of nice to have on your resume. Yeah. Currently, Bix is still traveling the world for both clubs and private events. He is also a partner at Nationally Renowned Heist, as we said. Let's give it up for our man, DJ Bix. Yo, thank you, man. Anybody, oh, anybody got a siren for me or some shit? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And, and another, another brother from the DMV earlier, born and raised in Baltimore, now living in Washington, D.C. He's a producer, DJ, has been touring since the age of 12 without, cool. without a work permit. <laughs> he is a member of the Grammy Award winning Nights Wonders True School DJs Tour, tours uh, for Jamla Rock Nation artist Rhapsody, and can be heard in the DMV spinning on the radio Magic 102.3, 92.7. Let's give it up for DJ Face. <laughs> this next brother is uh, originally grew up in North Cal, but moved to Philly in 97. Bought his first pair of turntables in 1988 at the age of 18. 98 or yeah 98 um and before he was an open format video dj he was part of the rave scene playing chicago hard house and disco house bumping that f box hit the box bang the box bang in the box yes and was spring break dj from 2012 to 2019 and was rep by near dark entertainment now he focuses most of his energy on funked which is an area idea or party he had now has become a most a monthly party a podcast and a live stream that focuses on all funky music, new funk, ghetto <laughs> funk, disco, disco house, and new disco. Let's give it up for Aiden Scott. What's up? What's up, Woo! guys? Thank you, funky. Happy to be here. Yes, thank you for being here. Uh, now, this next gentleman is, is, like I said, someone that I don't know personally, but I've admired from, from afar for a while. He, he pretty much puts the whole map of the United States on his resume of where he's living because he's pit philly la portland minnesota he's everywhere he's been mix show dj 20 years as a dj most notably power 106 in la hot 97 new york 102 in philly currently at go 95.3 in minnesota 10 years as the wiz khalifa dj two-time red bull three-star winner u.s finalist heavy hitters he is uh just a wonder to see dj 
I want to talk to you about one thing I've seen you do recently that I was super jealous and also super admiring of. But that's our man, DJ Bonix. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. This is fun already. Oh, oh. Yes, and, and we have one last guest that will be joining us later, and we'll, we'll, we'll save his resume for when he comes through the door, and that's DJ Ease. And he doesn't need much introduction, but we'll give that to him when he comes through. But thank you guys all so much for being here. Appreciate you taking the time out. I know a lot of you guys, uh, we were talking before we got on, we're coming from a podcast or getting ready for something. It's, it's even in this virtual world, we're all kind of jumping gig to gig. Uh, Face, what's going on with you, bro? How have you been this, this week? I see the Theisman jersey in the background. Uh, yeah, you see it. <laughs> uh, everything's, uh, everything's been good, man. Um, you know, it's uh, we're all in the same boat, I think. So, you know, it's a little up and down as far as like trying to stay productive and not and also not, you know, be too hard on myself for not being productive. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, for right now, I mean, I you know, there's been a, a lot of uh, good stuff happening, just, you know, having to be stuck and sit down for a minute. So just well, uh, appreciating it right now and, and, and wishing everybody the best. Well, you know, I, I know you had just come off a tour not too long ago, right? Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. And so I would, I would assume that that, uh, <clears throat> that kind of break is uh, just out of the norm for you a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it's crazy because the act actually the very last tour date um, was in Raleigh, North Carolina, and that got shut down or that got canceled. Um, wow. So that was our last show. We didn't get to do it. Um, but we were, you know, uh, grateful enough to get everything else in. So uh, it ended. And then, you know, who knows what, what's going on down the road. There was a bunch of stuff on the books, as I'm sure everybody else had. So we'll see what happens with all of that. But. They, they talked about a tentative reschedule for that last date in July, but I don't know how they're coming up with that date. We'll see. Yeah, I've been hearing lots of stories of, of reschedules getting rescheduled at this point. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of crazy. Yeah. And at Bix, man, bro, what, uh, what about you? I know like last, last time we were, we were talking, you were, you were in, in Dubai, you were overseas. Um, and I'm just glad to hear you got home. You know, yeah, man. I mean, it was tough. Like, uh, I was, I think, the second weekend of March, I was in Norway, and then they were like, they started to like just start chopping flights up, and like, I had to wait, I think, seventy-two hours, go to the embassy, and like, they had to pretty much book my flight for me to come back home, or else I would have been stuck there. Oh man, crazy, man. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. The, I mean, obviously for everybody here, like you all know, like things are just kind of put to a halt, but. It's dope to see the, the amount of creativity coming out of this thing, though. Yeah. Everybody has time to sit at home, make mixes, do live sets. You know, it's that. I think that's pretty much like the dopest part about it is that we actually have time to do the stuff we always want to do. Because you know, when we're on the road, you're just either too tired, too hungover, or just trying to catch some <laughs> some sleep on whatever flight you can. You know, also, like back to the basics, just standing behind, you know, the decks and and doing it. You know, as yeah. opposed to everything else that comes along with it. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah, Bonix, you were saying that you were getting off a live stream right before you got here. Uh, tell us what. Tell us about that. What was going on? Oh, he's uh, muted. Oh. <laughs> we can't hear you. You're you're muted, my, uh, Bonix. There you go. There, you go. How you doing? there we go. There we go. Um, it was uh, my boy who was in the the heavy hitters crew with me. And uh, Duran, uh, Duran Juan from North Carolina, he has a show. I, I guess apparently even before the quarantine, he was doing a Instagram live type show uh, of of DJing. So it was pretty cool and interesting because it was, I guess, all sorts of uh, levels of DJing. Because I guess apparently they want people to really see the um, the whole spectrum, the range of it. So <laughs> the the person, the the DJ before me. What, you know, had a controller or whatever, uh, but, you know, it was like pretty, uh, I want to say amateur, but I mean, it was, you know, it was like, it was amateur, I guess. And then I got on, so you got to see the people kind of react. So, but it's cool because the he's giving people a chance like on all levels, which is, you know, really cool. So shout out to Duran. It was cool. I mean, in some ways it's kind of like similar to a club gig where some dude at, at the beginning of the night's getting his, right. getting his chance to try to make it happen, you know? Yeah, your opener or something like that. Yeah, I, I've, I've definitely found it interesting. I, 
you know, owning a record store for, for 20 years back in the day and, and being in the, in the culture of seeing like the earlier generation of guys that were DJing before me even, and how they kind of timed out of the, the club scene and the, and the circuit of, of gigging week to week. I'm seeing those guys, they're like live streaming like crazy. I'm like, damn, I haven't seen this guy DJ in like 15 years. And now he's back on like three times a week at his house, like getting busy yeah. because they're, this is like for them what they've been doing for the last 10 years, like just sitting at home DJing in their bedroom. So now it's just throw a camera on and now they're just doing their thing. Yo, Quicksilver. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my, yeah. Dude, I remember him at Thursday nights at Platinum. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the QIC, man. He's yeah, man. been... He, and he and the interesting thing with some of these live streams is that's the there's a a good majority of people that actually enjoy just watching this. They don't want to go to a club anymore. They they got kids, they got families, or they're just kind of just tapped out on that whole scene. And but they're you know they're kind of going into a time travel a bit of and through these live streams, through the music people are playing, or through the people that they're seeing in the chat, which which I think is pretty cool. Aiden, you, you were saying you've been live streaming a lot of, of late. Tell us what you've been going. And it sounds like you were doing that even before. This yeah. Uh, definitely. Like I got into live streaming probably, geez, three, four years ago even. And when nobody was really doing it, it wasn't a thing DJs were doing. Nobody was using OBS. Uh, nobody was doing that extra bit. Cause I mean, again, we were all working. Um, but I was actually doing a lot of in stores at the time. Like I was, uh, you know, Scratch Academy. But uh, when I was doing in stores for them a long time ago, uh, like I'd be at Guess, and they had a strong enough Wi-Fi that I was doing these live streams, and I was just using Mix Emergency, Serato, and OBS, and very simplistic. Just like my, like I, w I would bring a webcam with me. Um, or I'd bring like above me right now. There's a there's a knockoff uh, GoPro called SJ Cam. I'm sure some of you are familiar with it. Uh, unlike GoPros, you can actually plug the, that camera into your laptop and it re registers as, as a webcam. You don't need a oh, wow. a, a, cap a capture device. Mm. Uh, and I have I have two of these, and they're they're not good GoPro replacements, but they're great for this uh, on the cheap. Um, and then I have a. Was that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. The one I have above above me right now, I have two of them. The only one I'm using right now of my live streams is the is is one that does 4K. So it obviously does 1080. Um, but yeah, I was doing that uh, years ago, and nobody was <laughs> nobody was doing it. And then I kind of fell off and stopped doing it. And then when quarantine hit, I and, and I also do photography and videography, so I have a bunch of camera gear and green screens and lighting just laying around. So I was able to like jump right back into into it with a little bit more expertise for the streams. I mean, I still want some better gear, but for right now, I was already prepared to just get back into it with the live streams. Nice. Well, it, your setup looks very official. It, um. it's, it, uh, there's a few people, I don't know if you, uh, there's a company in New Jersey called the DJ Experts that DJ Mike West runs. He has a full green screen studio and the feeds that they're doing are kind of insane. It's almost like the way Buck Rogers. Have you seen his live feeds? Yeah, man. Like, uh, like he's like he's all green screened up, including the DJ table. And it's I wish I had that. I'm kind of in a small studio right now, so I don't have room to put a camera way in front of me to get the whole booth. So I have a a camera mounted on the wall that I'm staring at right now, and then a camera above me. But that's all I really have room for right now. You just gave away the secret, bro. You could have just told told us you were in in the vortex of some nice. planet. And we would believe you. I give away all the secrets. <laughs> For the He's culture. in this room, guys. Damn. Now, Aiden, yeah. your the production quality of your live streams was the first. Your your live stream was the first one I saw and said like this has really got a future because I hadn't seen anybody take it to the level that you had that early and that that efficiently. Again, that's just it's there. because I have all the. It's because I had it all, all this gear laying around. Um, and uh, like in my house, I pay for gigabit internet, so I have a, a really strong oh, nice. upload speed. And uh, and my house here in Old City, uh, Philadelphia, is wired with enterprise grade Wi-Fi. So yeah, I, uh, I'm kind of a tech geek and- Enterprise grade. <laughs> So yeah, it was it was easy for me to jump back into it and have a uh, steady feed. The only thing holding me back right now from 
making it even better is having a second laptop to broadcast with. I'm doing everything on one laptop, which is not recommended at all, especially with how much I'm doing. I have two cameras, green screen, and mix emergency. Like, there's a lot going on. That's and then all lot. the all like the chat widgets and notification widgets and. Damn. What kind, what, what what are you running then? What kind of laptop are you running right now? I have a a, a mid 2019 fully maxed out MacBook Pro, and okay. it's the it's the model. Uh, that they snuck in that had the the Vega 20 GPU. Oh, so, 15 inch. Yeah, the 15 inch. Yeah, 15, I, dude, yeah. I want that. I want the 16 inch. <laughs> Ooh, sweet. Yeah, that's so does she. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. Uh, cheers to that. Yo, cheers. I'm actually cheers. having trouble cheers. hearing Sean when Sean talks. I yeah, can't really hear him. Sean, I think there's something to do with your wireless mic, man. I think I think. Uh, I got the other mic right here. Let me switch it up then. Yeah, that's switch it up. Now. Oh, it's good now. I think we can just get the mic closer. So. Uh, yeah, I put a gate on here so there's no background noise. Like my wife is walking back and forth behind the camera and all that kind of stuff. So I got you. I'll turn the uh, gate off. So uh, Bonix, have you um, have you said you've still been working a lot right now? You've still been busy, huh? You're muted again. Teddy Riley over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm doing. Uh, I do my radio show every day which is great because there's a mix. And what's cool about the mix too is I've been able to put some friends on the mix. So if any of you guys want to do a mix for the show, it's been fun. Recently, I've had uh, Trey's and Dolo and Ku, Mike 2600 and- All the homies. All the homies, nice. yeah. For sure, for sure. Wonder and all the, you know, uh, Espinosa, that's great, man. So anyone, uh, you know, wants to have a mix play in Minneapolis, we're independently owned. So we don't, you know, it's crazy. A lot of big market radio stations have furloughed like their stars, man, yep. which is crazy. You know, yep. I know that business wise, I guess is better and they can get an employment or whatever, but um, you know, I feel like that we need uh, people in our community more than ever to lift people up and leaders because we certainly are, you know, aren't getting the leaders that we really need right now. So For sure. uh, I have a voice every day, which is great. Uh, you know, and I do a mix every day and I put my people on. So doing that, I've done the Taylor gang live um, you know, I, I've done interviews and all sorts of stuff. So it's been really cool because everyone's in the same position, right? There's no FOMO. Even the artists are like trying to figure it out. So, uh, and you know, they're not busy. Real quick. Um, you know, they're definitely doing interviews and, and shit like that. So that's cool. Awesome. Hey, Bonix. Um, like we had Malcolm Xavier like a couple couple weeks ago, and and he was telling us like ratings are down with radio. Are are you guys seeing that in your market? I mean, definitely, you know, because it's all about habits. How people listen to radio, so people aren't working right now. People, you know, aren't learning the whip in the morning exactly. So yeah, definitely down. But if you have um, appealing content, and if you speak to the community, and you know, uh, you make it feel live and local, and you talk about your community, people listen. So, you know, we feel like we're serving our community, not just Hey, let's uh, let you know put our DJs under work. I don't think you know some big markets don't even have mixed DJs right now on the radio, which wow. is like, man, music is uh, one of the things that help people you know raise their vibrations, and I, I feel like they should have you know personalities behind it. You know, absolutely, yeah, especially uh, you know growing up, the mix show is what I probably think almost any DJ that was the first time they were like, yo, right, what what is happening right here? Like, yo, this guy's what is he doing with the songs right now? It's like being a young kid and you hear that first mix show DJ is something that I'll always remember of just hearing the, the first blend. But it's the, first, it's the first time you heard somebody do a live blend and you're just like, yo, I want to, I want to do that. That is what I'm talking about. That That's something unique. And it was a shout out to all the mix DJs, especially in the eighties and nineties where, where the turntablism, the art really started to take off. And you, even if it was like that 2 AM slot, you know, you'd hear somebody just, that's when they were just getting in we getting in with the with the selections and just with the creativity and so shout out to you guys shout out to face too i mean it we're gonna have to have both you guys back when we do the the whole radio <laughs> panel show of just talking to the guys that are just so multi-talented and um uh, face you know you're here local in the area we get to and you're on the stations that i think even before all this are already kind of skewed to playing a slightly different tick of music than the the normal channel so you've already kind of been blessed with being able to get open what's been going on for you on the on the shows um uh yeah you're right um magic's been uh unfortunately like radio one like bonus was talking about like a lot of you know people have been furloughed a lot of um you know salaries have been cut a lot of people have been asked to do a lot of things um but like you know everybody's broadcasting from home that kind of thing 
uh, for me, it's just, you know, sending in my mixes now. I just sit, I sit at home, you know, I record my mixes, send them in every week. Um, so, you know, I, I would do that once a week anyway, but now it's, it's, it's ramped up um, because we can't obviously go in. Um, but Magic is holding on and we're doing, you know, we're doing pretty well uh, for right now because I know a lot of um, a lot of other stations in the DMV market, you know, some in Virginia, some in Baltimore are have completely nixed the mix shows like so DJs like myself are out as well. Um, we seem to be the ones, you know, my boss is always about mix shows. So she's going to keep us on as long as she can. Um, so hopefully, you know, we'll stay on on that way. But yeah, I love Magic, man. It's like, you know. It fits right with True School, our you know our our, uh, our style of DJing and music that we deliver to our audiences. So it was a no-brainer for me, and it's 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 super comfortable. I love it there. Yeah, yeah. That's dope, man. That's dope. And you know, bonus back to what you were saying. I think Minnesota, Minneapolis in general, I think just really gets overlooked for their contribution to to the music culture in America. Uh, yeah. You know, going way back even into the '60s and '70s, I feel like you know Motown took so much of the shine, and then even you know for us and seeing like the the whole underground movement rhyme sayers that whole movement in the in the late 90s early 2000s was like such a pivotal hip hop uh culture spot like going to that city anytime i was there was like i was just always so impressed with uh just the knowledge that people have of music in general and just how much they really eat the music up so I, I'm curious. You've been kind of rolling around like all these cities, and what ended what ended up with you in in Minneapolis? I mean, the short story is um, uh, I it didn't work out in Portland with a station, more or less. And so I, I linked up with Mr. Peter Parker. I met him years ago. Uh, he's a legend from Boston. He's been around a couple markets, and uh, you know, I was like, I are looking for a job. I just moved to Minneapolis, thinking it would. I don't know. I didn't think much of Minneapolis, to be honest with you. Like, I didn't even think of it. I didn't really have an opinion. Uh, I didn't know much about it at all. But so I, I say the, the radio job was way more appealing than I, I took it for the job, not the city. And then I discovered that the city is amazing. I mean, you know, Prince, the time, all that, man, is just uh, so rich. I mean, we, we did a radio thon uh, today where we had people pay to play. You can donate money and play any song you want to. Oh, wow. That's cool. People requested like meatloaf on a hip hop station. <laughs> I mean, there was like K pop songs and all that. Which was kind of but, you know, uh, we got Slug called in and Brother Ali called in and Prop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these artists are so available. Uh, you know, with the breakout of Lizzo, Lizzo was, you know, in Minneapolis. We were playing Truth Hurts like, you know, three Same years right? ago. Wow. wow. You know that. And so Minneapolis is a great place. I can't say enough about it. Tweet yeah, man. That's dope. That's dope. By the way, okay. folks, if you're tuning in right now, um, we're we're live right now on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Uh, if you guys want to join us, uh, join the discussion in on Zoom. Just hit hit up the link bitly slash the nine at nine. It's on your screen if you're watching it on on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. So if you guys want to just join us with the ch in the chat, uh, make sure to do so on the Zoom. Yeah, and shout out to uh, E Boogie, Tim Nice. Juan Romero, Impulse, some of our <laughs> homies that are actually in the in the webinar chat room. Appreciate you guys. Uh, what Bix, Bix, you um, you you know, you're always traveling around and and doing shows. What what have you been able to work on since you've been home? Like something kind of is there anything specific that you've been just really thankful to be able to 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 get some time to do? I mean, to be honest, is actually these uh these live streams, the sets, because like normally I'm just so used to everyone being drunk and like if I fuck up here and there, it's okay. No one really cares because you know you're in a club, right? So <laughs> normally I, I would I would never do that sober, but the fact that you know we're all in this kind of situation really forced me to do this kind of stuff. So I think for me that's more that was really dope for me to learn that you know that it's okay to fuck up. You know, it's kind of like you know just playing music make people happy and uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I got kind of got me out of my uh my uh I guess how do you want to how do you want to put it like my uh the zone where like I was just kind of too afraid to do it you know it's weird mm. it's like you're, you're, you're it's like you're okay to DJ in front of like a couple hundred people but you're even more scared to just DJ by yourself staring at a wall you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah not to interrupt you guys but uh I personally when I listen to other DJs play I want to hear those little mistakes that we all make. 
Like yeah. I, I don't like it when yeah. a mix is too perfect because then I just automatically assume you're using sync and I want to hear I want to hear you bring a track in a little off and fix it right away. I want to yeah. hear that. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's about it's about the fix. Yeah. yeah. It's about how fast you can how how fast and how clean the fix is and it's okay. At least you know it's not a robot in the booth. Especially exactly. especially if you're spiraling, you know, on the on the live stream with the uh with, with a few a few drinks. <laughs> That was me yesterday. <laughs> but you know, you know, you know, Bix makes a good point though. Like, cause I, I had a conversation with a couple other DJs who've been streaming live and everything. And we were just talking amongst ourselves, wondering why, like, and you, you know, some, some cats haven't been on or streaming, but you know, outside of maybe not having, you know, decent equipment to do something at home or being wherever you're being stuck or just not emotionally vested right now to get up and do anything outside of that. It's just like, we, you know, I started talking to some of the, like, even some of the homies at the, at the station, like, asking them why they weren't streaming live, and some of them were saying some of the same things that Bix was saying, like, man, I don't feel like standing in front of a camera in a house by myself, like, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, we'll do it in a club, like you said, or on a stage in front of tons of people all the time, but a couple of those guys are now, you know, up and streaming and having the time of their lives, and I think once you take that pressure off like like i did a vinyl set the other night rex was skipping like crazy i didn't care you know what i mean it's just it is what it is like like you said it's just about helping people and helping ourselves too because it's therapy for me i know that one exactly and you realize you don't have to worry about playing banger after banger you can be playing like b-side records you can be playing right stuff that you want to play and just right never you know it's like you don't have to worry about emptying out a dance floor or worrying about bar sales it's like you're literally playing for yourself, which is dope. B-side you know? after B-side in this case. <laughs> I, you know, I, challenge, I challenge myself with like trying to come up with themes because what that's doing is like helping me yeah. fill in gaps in my crates. Like I realize when I start like doing these themes, I'm missing key records. And I'm like, damn, I didn't have this. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's also helping, you know, with filling in holes in the crates. No, absolutely, man. When, it, when everybody started going live, I was very vocal on Facebook about like digging deeper than you usually would for a regular dance floor because I don't know. I mean, I've, I mean, I know like Phonix works in radio, so he uh, is like very up to date with the current top 40 stuff and, you know, all that. But I've been, I mean, I've been growing a little jaded to a lot of current <clears throat> pop music, should, should we say? And uh, not the so only I one. That's okay. why that's that's exactly why I started pushing harder for like my 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 funk uh sets where I'm where I'm playing ghetto funk and new disco and disco house and and not playing the records that every like that everybody expects to hear. Like you don't you're not reliant on your dance floor anymore. You can really be you now. Yeah. I I definitely feel like um I mean I'm an older I guess a little older cat and I grew up DJing mm -hmm. to where it, you were supposed to you were supposed to play records that people didn't know or you were supposed to go to a, a, a spot and the DJ was supposed to put you onto something and and I've never strayed away from that me mentality and I always typically try to think well if I'm gonna play something that people aren't gonna maybe respond to I'm just gonna make sure I have something that they're gonna love following it up and I actually love especially at a place like heist where Bix and I play a lot it's a small room. It's an intimate room. Um, you can take a left turn on them real quick, and like, and kind of hit them with something that they're like, "What? What just happened?" And watch the room kind of in surprise actually kind of flow into it and actually get it. And I and I think it's it's maybe the comfortability of him and I are the we book the DJs we we run the the place so we have the I think the the courage to be like, "Yo, if you don't like it, piss off." But also. It's more, you know, a mentality of, of, of not being afraid as a DJ to, to allow yourself a little bit of that space to be vulnerable it, or to, like you guys were saying, like, I, I personally don't even like to play quantized old records. I'd personally rather play the record that wasn't even quantized right, than redone dumb. in the studio and all pristine. It's like, I actually, I love, I still love mixing. I, <laughs> I, I don't, maybe I'm different, but I love to try to still use my ears or, or ride a long ass blend when you know the drummer is live and and how it's like driving a car it's like do you want to you want to get in your car and hit the directions and uber takes you there or you want the wheel i want the wheel you know so bro you smash at an esl on your nights man you yeah, play totally. stuff i like bro i've never heard the stuff before but you're making the crowd love that shit though man no, i appreciate so that yeah 
I appreciate that. I mean, and a lot of it uh, uh, too is you know having a, a place like ESL. Shout out to 18th Street Lounge, 20 25 year uh, spot owned owned by uh, Fareed and the Thievery Corporation for a lot of years, and those guys were already making music that's really. Uh, different and avant-garde so they they you know when you have club owners that also love real music and and want to push up good timeless music you get to be able to uh play dope records i mean i i've seen i've heard bonix play sets where you know i'm i'm tuning in and just going like man i can't believe the records he just played and you're muted right now so unmute because i want to talk to you about something <laughs> i've been th- i've been dying to talk to you about this since the summer because you and i are both we we dj for baseball teams i'm watching that so you dj for the twins from time to time and uh and and when you did your your national anthem set now i've been i had been toying with trying to do something like that before and they'd ask me like hey you know sometimes you might need to have something on backup for us and I thought about trying to like maybe do some kind of cool edit or something. What you did was absolutely spectacular, man. It it like blew me away. It made me so jealous and also so <laughs> just loved it. Tell it was, tell the people about that. Yeah. Uh it was different, man. I don't even know. I had thought about like, hey, what if I DJ the national anthem and cut it line for line? It literally was just an idea I had. And it was like a year, almost a year later that I actually tried to do it. And I literally just sat down went on YouTube, Googled who had the most pop in, you know, national anthems. And, um, and then uh, I cut it line for line. So like Lady Gaga or whoever, I don't know them all right now, but you know, Whitney Houston, of course, and Pink and John Legend and uh, choir. Um, I even put the Jimi Hendrix, a uh, little part of Jimi Hendrix in there. So it was pretty cool, but I just did it one day, man. I literally just was like, gonna do this. I've been thinking about it all year and I was like, like I just jumped right into it boom 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 and I recorded it and then I just sat on it for a while and I, I um, asked like uh, one of the, uh, p- the people that work at the twins that I know and uh, they said everything was booked for the year like they literally book out the national anthem like throughout the whole year yeah, like, yeah. so they went uh, before last season they wanted to book me for one which was going to be in June and basically um, you know a week up to doing it I just started messing around with it again and you know, it had um, mixed uh, opinions, which is great because uh, that's what you want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what you want. Well, I mean, guys, if if, if anybody w- watching out there doesn't know, how can they find a clip of that to, uh, to check it out? YouTube on the Go 95 through YouTube. I think if you te- uh, put in DJ Bionics National Anthem, it was pretty cool uh, because, man, it's never been done before as far as I no. thought, you know, and people have said, you know, people have critiqued it like, every, you know, everything should be uh, in key or whatever which DJs, you know, uh, but I also think that like, that's the, that's the beauty of it. Everything's off key, but together it's the same song. You know what I mean? And, that, that happened like 4th of July last year, right? Yeah, it was, uh, around there. Like Memorial I think. Day or, I, think like, or, I think that was like June. one of the most, most retweeted, uh, you know, DJ sets like, uh, you know, like during that time. Man, that- I, I don't know. It was uh, pretty, uh, it was pretty cool. And it was, uh, I'll tell you a funny little quick story is that as soon as I got done, I looked over and I saw older gentlemen, um, like people were like, you know, cheering or whatever, but people never seen this before. So they just kind of confused regardless, you know, people will be confused and you guys playing music off the lane. So this controls the record. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that. That and so right when I was done, I look over and I see an older, very older gentleman kind of look over, shake his head and he whispers to something, you know, he's like, critiquing it real bad while everyone's like yeah and i'm just like laser focused at this cat you know (laughs) and i ran over to him and i'm like excuse me sir i was like i saw that you really didn't feel it and um i feel like uh you know we're just a a younger generation and we're just expressing ourselves through music and so i'm sorry you didn't like it and he was just like shocked that i would even like confront him like that you know what i'm saying and uh, he was like, uh, mm, uh, I mean, and I was like, nah, man, it's cool. I just want to let you know. I appreciate it, you know. And later on, his friend comes by before they leave when the game's on. He's like, I just want you to know that he needed that. He's, like, <laughs> He's an asshole, you know. So it was cool, though, man. And that's what it is. If, like, I realize at that moment, if not everyone likes what you do, then you're actually making noise. You know what I'm saying? Mm, nice. uh, because that's what it is, man, is that some people will agree and disagree. You know, you see a lot of this DJ bickering about conspiracy theories and stuff right now on Twitter. And people are actually like 
you know, saying things about how people are and everyone's a good person, you know, they're all good people. I know people on both sides that it doesn't need to go to like major critiquing. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, um, and thanks. Uh, shout out to Juan for putting the link in the, on the YouTube in the chat panel here um, for you guys to check that out. It was as, as a person that's been working 12 years for the nationals uh, to see another fellow DJ do something like that. It just, it, it really blew me away. It warmed my heart and just, like you're saying, it's 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 stretching the the art form to a new place. Doing anytime you can stumble upon something to do that nobody's ever done or attempted to do, it's like it's very rare to to do in anything these days to stumble upon something I, new, I, and fresh. You know, I showed Z Trip when I, I was with him one time in Austin, I think, and he was like, "You should work on that." You know, but <laughs> I feel like uh, I'm up for it because you know. There's it's definitely something to be people do it differently and that's you know marvin Gaye. they were like ah you know <laughs> right, it's crazy right. i'm not sure fergie whoever you oh know my so, God. <laughs> whatever i did well, it the dj i think that could be a first so that's cool well the yeah and uh yeah there's carl carl lewis's national anthem was oh, one man. of those <laughs> 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 uh, and and uh and if you guys have never seen cuba gooding senior his national anthem is oh, off the charts it, it's Word? like yeah i mean being in baseball we we actually nerd out sometimes and and just google down a wormhole of national anthems and you'll find some the the cuba gooding senior one is a must watch it is it is church <laughs> it is one of the the greatest things i've ever seen um and now, Carl Lewis, if you just want to laugh. Yeah, Carl Lewis just, huh? oh, oh boy. He he couldn't run away from that one fast enough. That's for sure. <laughs> who, who did it recently? Patty LaBelle or something, right? Was that the, who, or who sang it recently and it was kind of suspect? Shaka oh, Khan. People were giving Shaka her Khan, a whole yeah. lot of heat oh. about that. I love Shaka Khan. She can do no wrong in my mind. So, you know what? It, it is what it I, is. Yeah. I didn't hate it. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. But I wanted to say to your point, Bonix, and actually it goes to what uh, Chris was saying about being vulnerable. And really, there is nothing in life that comes out of not putting yourself in a, in a position to be, I guess, critiqued by the masses and take that risk. So the fact that you had an idea and rather than just like sit on it indefinitely, like taking the steps to get there and then eventually being able to present it to the world. I like, this is the first I'm hearing about this in this conversation. I'm definitely Same. gonna check for the video, but it, that is a really good lesson for all the DJs out there. There's really nothing that's gonna uh, push you more than something that's gonna make you feel very uncomfortable across the board for your entire career. Yeah, and to connect with that, I guess, you know, I, I, the first thought of my head was, in my personal head, was with DJ battling. When I started battling in 2002, um, I realized very soon that, you know, it was pretty cutthroat. I made friends, but then I made a couple of enemies. Um, not because I'm an asshole, because they're assholes. But <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, though, I realized, you know, when I would hang out with guys that would practice, but then not enter battles, I'd be like, why aren't you going to battle? And they'd be like, well... Uh, I'm not ready for it and I, I get hitting the stage is fucking it's terrorizing and to know that you're being judged in every single move is is yeah there it goes uh is <laughs> is one thing but you know pushing yourself to do it I kind of became numb to the to the idea that people were judging me until like my whole thing we, we talked about going to New York you know and, for 10 years battling and I forced the idea down people's throats that I was confident enough you know, to enter, like I didn't care win or lose. I was like, I'm still gonna enter. So people knew he's he might he might win, he might lose, but we know we're gonna see something, um, something from the heart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, for sure. I mean, you know, the reason that we wanted to, you guys on is, you know, to just hear your perspective of, you know, how, uh, especially you tour guys and Aiden. You know, we thought it would be cool to have you on as well, even though I was you're not. I was curious to where I was here. I'm like tour DJ, tour DJ, tour DJ, battle DJ, me. <laughs> well, you know, art is art is on the beat refinery. He's going to be here all the time. But, you know, we also know where you are with doing the, the, your own parties, doing bookings. Um, you see a lot of guys come in that are off the road. And it's also sometimes good to see the experience of of what you're doing, uh, being in the, that Philly Atlantic City area. And a lot of a lot of the things that you have happening, you come in contact with a lot of these guys. So it's it's also good to kind of hear your perspective from, you know, maybe not on the tour, but but definitely seeing these guys and, and being a part of, you know, what they go through, seeing them come in, seeing them probably half the time jet lag coming into Atlantic City. And oh, of course, you know, and don't sell yourself short, Aiden, because you definitely do your fair share of traveling as well. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, just I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm very much uh, 
uh, a sufferer of imposter syndrome. <laughs> so I'm constantly at odds in my own head of do I deserve to be here type of a deal, yeah. like all the time. And it's just uh, I, I'm, I'm getting better at it. But sorry, my my girl's bringing me uh, more vodka right now, guys. Thank nice. you. <laughs> yeah. Everybody say thank you, Lauren. Thank, thank you, Lauren. Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, it, that's that's exactly how I felt when I saw the the lineup of people here right now, and I'm like, why am I even here? But that's just my own demons. What's your best way around that, Aiden? I think that's a common thing for a lot of artists is to feel like they how they got there and not deserve it. What's it's kind amazing. of funny, yeah, what's kind of funny about that whole thing, and I, I saw that you mentioned this about Impulse last week, about how we talked about performance anxiety, and obviously everybody looks at Impulse or X or really any of the scratch mechanics as super dope DJs, so a lot of people look up to those guys, and um, the same goes for everybody on this call right now. I'm sure that there's somebody, no matter where you think you are, there's somebody that is seeing what you're doing and wondering how you're doing it and wanting to be doing it. So almost no matter what level you're at, there's somebody that's wanting to be you. And um, like, I look up to like all you guys and- I want to be Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, we all, we all, literally. <laughs> we all aspire to be somebody right now or right. not to be somebody, but to, to to gather the knowledge and the information and the and the skills that somebody that above us has. And I, what I will say is that we're all bedroom DJs now. Again, we're all bedroom DJs. I don't know how long everybody here's been DJing, but I'm sure a lot of us are in the 20 plus year mark. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're we're looking at 200 years between this crew and here. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> like I, I don't know. Like you said, you're you're up there in age. Like I turned 40 in September, so I, you know I'm 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 an old fuck too now. Uh, but, but this this industry keeps us young, I think. And absolutely. Um, For sure. Look at this baby face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Point on my good side. Yeah. <laughs> Silver fox over here. <laughs> the Clooney. I'm where you're at, man. It's, it's hidden under here. You know? But here, or, here's but the I, thing. I, here's the thing, I, Aiden. I, Aiden, I, like, like that's a, that's such a good I, attitude to have, I, anyways, I have man. To like, die, man. Like more more DJs. I have to die. Cut looks tight though, bro. You got a barber. Pay hundred dollars for a barber. Bro, I do it myself, man. <laughs> That's a pretty tight line you got right there. Yeah, he's always had the fresh line, man. It was like ever since I've known. Ever Yo, since I've known. When you're bald, that's all you have. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can grow the beard. I gave up on both sides. I cut the top myself, and I get rid of this, so I don't got any patchiness. So I'm jealous of that beard. I'm almost there. Up. I'm almost Pat there. These so. jeans, man. These Indian jeans, man. It's crazy with the hair. No, but um, go, but going back to to you, Aiden, like you know, like the, the the things that you were saying, you know, that's such a good attitude to have, to begin with, you know, just being humble, you know. Yeah. A lot of DJs need to be like that. Yeah. <laughs> from no, time and to being, time, so. Yeah, being a I, fan, especially right now when, you know, the the situation that we're all going through right now, it's like, you have to be humble by by this right now, you know. Yeah. That's that's exactly yeah. why I again I was very Get vocal humble. in the beginning of the quarantine of like obviously a lot of DJs who never brought like did a live stream before started doing live streams. And there was a lot of DJ on DJ hate, which there always is, but like it's I mean, people were looking at my streams and going, Well, that's like really professional and then there's somebody with a camera that's their double chin and really bad angles. <laughs> and it's not it's not that they it's not that they shouldn't be doing it. They just need to be coached on like camera angles or whatever, but they're doing it. You know, they're, they're putting themselves out there to a lot of ears that never heard them before. They, again, uh, to reiterate the point before, there's a lot of people watching live streams that don't go to the clubs anymore. They don't, which is the same way, the same reason I started video DJing in the first place. Cause when I started video DJing, a lot of people were like, why would you want people to watch videos and not dance? And my response after doing some thinking about it was there's always a percentage of, of customers at a bar or a club that aren't going to dance, period. They just don't dance. They come to hit on girls or guys or, or to drink at the bar, but whatever. They're not going to dance. So if you can entertain those people in another way and get them to buy another two beers, that's good. Plus, with the video DJing, you're getting your socials out there in front of all these eyes. So I never, I never looked at video DJing as 
as taking away from the dance floor. Because people who are going to dance are going to dance. People who are not going to dance, odds are, aren't going to dance. Mm. It's also, true. The art, like the whole, the, it all ties in. I mean, you're bringing in the music and the visuals and creating a scene. Yeah, I mean, you look at like, you know, all the festival acts. I'd yeah, argue right. that the entire experience of those shows mostly is the visuals. Yeah. Not I cool. remember, I think the first show, a DJ show that I ever went to where the visuals to me were really prevalent was the DJ Shadow show. Like, yeah. on the second Ooh, album. Yeah. Where, like, it was way before all the EDM stuff or any DJs. It was, and, you know, his whole setup up on, on the stage was, it was at Nation, too. Shout out to Capitol Ballroom, the Nation, that yeah. iconic venue in D.C. You know? I miss that place. Oh, such a great venue. And, and to see, like, what? he had, that stage was huge, and he had that backdrop and all the visuals. And for someone that's playing really emotional music and DJing, just things that are just hitting you in a different way that the that was the first time like the visual kind of tied into where i was like wow this is this is different than any djing i've ever seen before because this is actually becoming cinematic right in front yeah. of my eyes you know that's it felt theatrical for me as well yeah now bix you've been uh you know mostly where did do, where does jay sean where does the tour usually go for you because i know you you're like you go on these crazy trips and you're home for a bit and then you're gone again and uh i mean Majority, it's Middle East, South Asia, Australia heavy. We were there back in September for a month. And then we have just your, your random spot dates and college shows and private events in the, in the U.S. and stuff. But yeah, Middle East, Europe, and, and South Asia is like where we're at pretty much heavily now. I mean, during the cash money days is when uh, obviously we're just doing stupid shows in North America. So once that kind of uh, – once he left them, then we just headed uh, east – I mean, money's money, so and there's actually more money overseas anyway. And people don't have as much to take their attention over there, so I think again, you know, people appreciate music. I think a little bit more in Europe and in Asia and places where, it's like, yeah, you know what's funny? I like, I don't mean to generalize, but I feel like everywhere else in the world except North America, people are just so much more educated and open-minded when it comes to to music and artists and stuff. I agree I with that I, wholeheartedly. Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't understand why or how it is like that, but like, I just feel like there's so much more free reign and appreciation for newer, doper, fresher music out there. We used to we used to have this conversation for a long time before the uh, you know the the internet and if you go back even 15 years ago to Europe, they had football, their version of football and music. That's it. Ooh. There was not there was not TV. There wasn't all these other things that people got their mind taken away from or wasted their time on. They were passionate about music, they're passionate about football. And when you're li when you're kind of looking at two major avenues as where you get your passion from, then you're going to dive in, you're going to know everything about every stat and you're going to know everything about every record, you know, and it's yeah. And here in America it's just like we get stuck on real housewives or people get stuck on, you know, stupid just kind of stupid stuff, like or or just a, a myriad of of entertainment that American culture and capitalizing uh, capitalism gives you uh, those outlets. Even even back in the day, you know, people could just find their way through three hundred different forms of entertainment. It's very limited over there. So, do you what do you feel is happening like with this whole with the with the COVID situation? Are are you feeling that? Uh, you're going to be really stuck down for a while over there. Do you feel, feel like maybe because you're in the European countries and in Asian countries that you're going to actually get back to touring faster than maybe the guys in America? I mean, that's funny. We had a conversation with Jay today and like, even he said, he's like, he doesn't feel comfortable taking on gigs unless there's a vaccine or some kind of antibody that's out in the world. I mean, you just don't know who you're going to run into or what can happen. So like, I mean, even he said in the rest of the camp is like, you know, not accepting any bookings until everybody in the world is like, you know, good to go and life is somewhat back to normal. I mean, which I agree with, you know, there's no point taking a risk yet. He's in the UK, right? No, he's in New York. In he's New been York? in New York okay. for like 12 years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah I mean, like... I, I totally agree with him. It makes sense too, man. It's like, you just don't know. And it's just not safe. It came out a month ago, but there was a really good article. Uh, I, I want to say it was Vice. Um, they did a whole article about uh, the future of of concert promotions. You know, uh, based on what's going on right now, a lot of the indie promoters might go away because they can't 
they can't weather the storm like Ticketmaster or Live Nation can, and it and the the concert industry or the festival industry is gonna gonna be completely different after we're all out of this. Mm. I'm sure like like Bonix and 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 you will have a little bit more light. Like my my agent books like I those of you who don't know me I work a lot in casinos, and my agent he books a lot of casinos, but he also books the major acts that play casinos too. And, uh, like, they booked the major acts for uh, Atlantic City Beer Fest, stuff like that. And so a lot of his income comes from booking major acts, which is, like, the, the, the lowest form, the lowest amount of money he makes is booking DJs. <laughs> so it's booking the major acts and, and bands and stuff like that. And it it's going to be a whole different scene come fall with with concerts. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, there's an article that came out this morning. I don't know the validity of it, but um, Mark Zuckerberg announced that like Facebook's striking a deal to allow artists to to charge for shows. Yeah, now, I saw that. You guys see that? I saw that this morning too. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I mean, I think companies like Facebook and Twitch and Instagram, which is Facebook, these companies are gonna have to adapt and change to the way the market's gonna go. And unfortunately, that's like we're forced to the DJs who aren't live streaming right now or don't have the cap like, again, out of sight, out of mind. They're, like with a lot of us who need to stay working, if you're not being seen by anybody, people forget about you. Absolutely. People always wonder, like, why does Coca-Cola and McDonald's and these major corporations spend all these advertising dollars? Because they even know that even at their level. Yep. It's somebody's waiting to take you. Someone's ready, ready to get your spot. You know, Bonix is ready. No, I was just saying, like, I definitely agree. I know what you guys are saying, but, um, tell us, yeah. Tell us what, what you're feeling about like touring and, you know, you're, you know, being Wiz Khalifa's DJ. Wiz is like one of these guys that's just beloved. I think he's a type of character that he's got like true hip hop fans. He's got people that, some people that are just like more pop fans, but they like his music or people that don't even mess with hip hop kind of find their way to him, um, which is a is really unique. And you probably see this in the, I, I'm sure, I'm assuming you see it in the type of crowds that you see at your shows, but what, what are you feeling is, is kind of going to be that? I mean, uh, it's a good break. I would feel bad if other people were touring, you know what I'm saying? So like, I don't have like a FOMO or nothing. So right. I was like, you can't tour. I can't tour. If someone was touring. I'm not, then maybe I'd feel like I was in a uh, lesser position, but thankful for radio and you know other ways to make money um that's man i do it every day you know what i'm saying i do it every day um right now i was on the radio for almost seven weeks in a row because uh some of the part-timers can't go live and stuff so they have all our full-timers going and uh it's a job and it's cool what's cool too is that again or like i was saying earlier that we do have a voice, but as far as the shows is concerned, I look at it as like, it's just money waiting. Cause I know Wiz is going to want to perform, you know? Mm -hmm. So until then, like, I can't freak out. Uh, I think that, you know, I don't think the out of sight, out of mind isn't true because everyone's going through it. And the first thing people aren't thinking about is where's my DJ. You feel what I'm saying? So like that, whole, that whole, like, Oh man, you know, I got to keep my brand alive. Like, nah, man, everyone's trying to survive. No one's like, Oh mm -hmm. shit, I forgot about the DJ. Like if you're dope, do whatever you rise right now and you take advantage like people like trays and whoever or you just chilling you know what i'm saying because you built that you built that nest you built a nest for yourself and you were smart with whatever and say hey you know what i'm cool or you're collecting unemployment or cool or you i know djs that as someone tweeted like i did a big company party for this thing and now i work for this company you know it's like whatever you got to do so i don't think there's like a pressure of like who's being seen who's not being seen it's like we're just trying to survive so people who can um, uh, have the capacity, like D nice, whatever to take the next level. Other people got to figure out how to feed their family. So, you know what I mean? I don't think it's that serious. I mean, it's serious in one way, but it's not like, Oh, you're that dude streaming. I don't want the ill DJ that was doing it for 15 years. You know, mm. like, you know what I'm saying? So it's interesting. I, I, I think, I think there's probably, um, like validity in, in both sides of that opinion, just kind of feeling like where you are in, in your own personal career. I, I think, like I wouldn't wouldn't even want my wife to to hear you say that because she'd be like, "See, you don't need to be out there in the garage live streaming all the time. People aren't gonna forget you." <laughs> <laughs> no, Had that conversation fun, so many fun, times, man. You know what I mean? Get it how you live it right now. Like, 
at first I, I went from week to week with different feelings. Like, I don't know, it's not for me. All right, that was fun. If I get, if you get nervous to do it, then yup, go ahead and do it. Yeah, no, if, it's, if, if it I has been. Nervous, then it should be fun. Like, and it did, when I did my little set, I was like, uh oh, a whole new audience I want to put on. And that's yeah. what it is. like, what kind of noise do you want to make? You know what I mean? You want to, you know, cause there's a lot of noise right now. So, you know. Absolutely, I mean, I agree with you hundred percent, but like, I know for me, it's one of those things where like, it's just kind of like a, a reset. I can just, yeah. if I feel like playing some set, I'll just, I'll sign back on, go live and just play whatever the hell I want just for me to just, you know, feel like I'm still DJing. You know, just, it's for me personally, and that's the only reason I find myself doing it. I'm sure a lot of DJs are the same way where it's like, you need that release, man, with everything going on. Like sometimes, you know, just playing a, a mix of whatever just, just helps out, you know? Oh yeah, I mean, the same way that people love to hear music, if you're a DJ, you love to play music and you know, the the first two weeks, I didn't probably touch, my, even open my Serato. And the first time I did, and and actually, I didn't live stream anything. I just made a, a soulful gospel house mix right around Easter time and just sent it out to people that I knew wanted something that was a little uplifting. And it was like, it, it did more for me than the people that, that I think even reached, that I reached out to take the, 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 rec, the mix from because it was the first time I actually, like, put some songs together and just started to feel normal again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, this year with the Nats winning the parade, I, I DJed in front of, of 780,000 people live in, in front of me and wasn't even the, the bit, not even nervous at all. I was just so excited and giddy and in front of whatever, nobody in my garage, I'm like panicking, going through a straight panic attack of nervous energy partly because you have to have an IT degree to live stream, I think, but it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, it's interesting how the, uh, how things change on us so quickly and where, uh, you know, I can, I can relate. I, I, I feel like when I'm having my, what Aiden's saying, where it's like, I'm feeling irrelevant. I need to remind myself of what Bonnick said of like, Joe, just chill out. Just, yeah. it's going to be okay. Like you didn't, you didn't do this for 25 years to just like fall off. Yeah. You know, like, there's also a Sorry. we're from that grinding era man you know some yeah. of like, a lot of those dudes yeah. were you know our guys were crossed over from vinyl serato era we're from the you gotta grind you get up blah, blah, you know and <laughs> now you know we gotta chill like you know uh it's tough because when you go like you know at the prime of like six seven nights a week just because you're doing it you know what i mean like uh it's cool to chill right now. <laughs> I'll take it, man. I'm with you on that. I'll take it. Like, even after, you know, um, coming home from, from tour earlier and, and like, I took that first week, that was like, man, that was fantastic. Like, I was burnt out anyway, so I took a week to rest. But at the same time, I was like, all right, what's the next move? And, like, two days, two days into it is when I saw D-Nice, like, streaming. So I was like, okay, I've already, I've done that before, like back in the Ustream days. I used to do that like you every stream. Tuesday. <laughs> and, stream. Yeah. Uh, you so stream. I was like, yeah, I can do that. That feels good. And it felt good to just be like, for me, it was more about like um, getting up and doing something. And then also, you know, giving an escape for, for people tuning in and actually being able to connect with people, like talking on the mic. I don't care if it's like five people in it, like just to be able to like talk to somebody and, like right now, the mic and entertain them like you would at a club. It's just that's how I carry it, and it's like it's fun. I'm, 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 I know people now like on these streams like that I'm hopping in and out of that I'm seeing bounce to other people's streams that when I pop in they're shouting me out and I'm shouting them out like we're developing these weird kind of internet relationships and it's cool like I love it. Yeah, you know, I, I gotta say I've connected with uh, a handful of people that I've never even really spoke to other than commenting on the same Facebook status before that. We've got on the phone now, and now we're friends because of this. The other way I want uh, I'd say to look at uh, going live as a DJ, and again, there's, whether you want to or not, it's no big deal. But like just today, uh, I did a live feed too before before we jumped on this, and somebody jumped on who who's been depressed for a while, and you know, again, we music's important to a lot of people, and people have told, and I'm sure somebody, uh, everybody else who's gone live. Somebody in the chat room has said, like, yo, I needed this today. Like, this is this is what I needed. That's I was awesome. in a dark place, and this made me feel better for even an hour or 10 minutes or whatever it is. So you're still making people – you're still spreading that love that music can – that connection that music brings all of us. Yeah, 
Amen to that. That yeah. that's. I don't have anybody in my face asking me to play something. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no. Tell you to go away. Like it's perfect. You yeah. just act like you don't read now. You didn't see it in the in the chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, some of you didn't see the hat I was wearing before I changed into this hat, but it said uh, uh, "F your request." <laughs> yeah, shout out, shout out to Nugget um, at the gold mark. He's got that nice pink light up sign with the no F and request. No F and request. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the best. That's one actually one of my favorite places I've ever DJ before too. Shout out to to Pittsburgh. That's a, one of those. That's one of those other cities too, man. Bonix, respect you. I know you spend a lot of time there. It's like anytime I go play in Pittsburgh, it's like the the people just appreciate DJs in that town and in a way that I think is really unique. And you can see it in all the all the homies back there that are that are playing and like I feel like I'll just look at their socials on like a random Wednesday night and Thursday night and whatever club they're at is just jumping, like just just banging out and you're just like, Man, that's that's a town that's just enjoying life. I it's like funny because I talked to some of the homies, Digital Dave and and Nugget, and these guys are like, "Yo, when they let us out, Pittsburgh's gonna come back hard. They don't care. They're gonna be out there partying their tails off as soon as they can get in the clubs. You know, especially so once, much- especially once football season comes around. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. Yeah, Pittsburgh yeah. and Philly are both very, very fortunate that all the uh, DJs that are in that city really doing things are at a level that is hard to match in other cities, you know, many other cities around the country. Just like the bar is very high, so I can see that going like to the moon. Yeah, I really admire uh, like Texas scene, and I really admire Florida, man. Florida's got, you know, Tampa in general, just Tampa. Yeah, shout out to DJ Koo too, man. That's the homie. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, shout out to the chat. Yeah. I want to say something though that 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 just reemphasized something that Bonick said earlier, because um, it kind of regis- resonated with me, is that uh, you know anybody that's tuned in, listening, watching and to, to to the guys that's here in the room, like as long as there he is. All right, we got E J E. Hey, uh, you saved your spot, man. But by, by the way, folks, if you guys didn't know, we 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 have our we have our intern just just uh <laughs> filling out his spot right now. So Adrian, uh, we're gonna we're gonna demote you, and uh, make sure to take notes, and uh, I'll, we'll talk later. Thank you. Shout out, shout out to Adrian, yo. Shout out to Adrian. Respect to Adrian <laughs> for holding Ease's place. What up, can you? Yeah, yeah. What up, Ease? Oh, oh, what up, what up? Uh, are... So let's give him his proper introduction first, man. USA DJ and producer DJ Ease has set his mark in the world as one of the most musically versatile party rockers in today's open format party scene. He's featured on Sway in the Morning and having continuous bookings all over Europe, US, Asia. His style of mixing multiple genres has become in high demand for party goers all around the globe. Dive from rocking clubs, Ease is also known as national DJ champion, certified platinum artist, Young MAs, Young Ma's official tour DJ, and has toured as opening DJ for major artists, including Nerd, BC Boys, Usher, Fetty Wap, Cardi B, Grandmaster Flash, and Nas. Ease has held a residency at the legendary Hard Rock Casino Rehab Beach Club in Las Vegas. And mixes live weekly on NBA Championship, Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq Fu Radio. Let's up, DJ E's in the house. Champ is here. Hey, I I brought this one out just for you. It's the Can I Rock? What's up, Doc? The Foo Snicket. I, I just made that for today. <laughs> oh, word. That's fine. What's up, y'all? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Right. Man, you you are definitely not landed. joking. I literally just landed. I'm on a plane right now, bro. Oh, wow. Yo, that's that's pretty gangster, brother. Thank you. Living dangerously. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. that. What do you uh you know, if you don't mind, where where are you up to right now? You're on a flight. <laughs> that's like where yeah. last place yeah. what I'm thinking about. Yeah, it's scary, man. Um I didn't want to have to be on one right now, but I'm in the middle of like moving from uh I'm moving from LA to back to Vegas. Okay. So I had to, to handle, handle some stuff. But yeah, man, it was crazy. There's like nobody at these fucking airports right now. It's like really empty. Um, everybody's being extra precautious and safe and stuff. So I'm just happy to be back back in LA right now. I'm real with you. 
Damn, I'm just going to press up the plane. It's crazy. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, I feel That's like crazy. The, beat, the Beat Refinery 9 at 9 has now gone to CNN status, where we got like a live reporter at the airport. <laughs> Yeah, I literally just landed and called you guys. Like, well, yo, cause I yeah. felt bad as shit already. But um, yeah, man, everything's good, man. I've been working on new music. I started a record label. Um, things are on the up and up, you know. Um, I was on tour with Young and May. Uh, right when the pandemic hit, so we did three so we did three shows out of thirty. Then we got sent home. Oh wow. Mm. So uh, three shows kind of out of thirty. Wow. Yeah, three shows out of thirty. We were on a um on a tour. We just did a European tour of like fifteen dates, and we we're doing a U.S. tour, which was completely sold out. So we're looking forward to that shit, man. And this happened, took a hit, so I'm back home. You know. So, yeah, that's what we're talking about. We're all back home, trying to trying to make it happen, trying to figure it out. Yeah. So um, I'm real thankful at the same time, man, because. My situation, man, I still do radio, you know what I'm saying? So um, being able to work from home and doing radio was kind of cool because I'm pre-recorded in New York, and I do Shaquille O'Neal's show pre-recorded. Oh, wow. And, um, so I'm still, I'm still thankful to have that situation. But, yeah, going off the road kind of hurt a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we've been, we've been talking about that over the last few weeks, how so many of our friends, um, even not in this industry, but just in whatever industry they're in, we're really – hitting like super highs this year. They were all like soaring through with like all these projects and success. And it's like, just kind of flipped on everybody. The, the whole, the whole rug was, was pushed right out from under us. It's like the universe already knew it was like a, it was like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to give you all this, this good energy. Cause we're about to give you a lot of bad energy. Yeah, man. You had Bonix on here earlier, huh? Did yeah. He's Bonix? on here. He's on here yeah, right, he's, now. right now. Yeah. Oh. Shout out to Bonnie. You, might, you, might need, you might need to swipe to see him in the. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sub Zero yeah, wins, man. man. Sub Zero wins. Fatality. Sub Zero wins. No, no lie. When the pandemic hit, I fucking got, I got Mortal Kombat on Sega Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> That's true story. Do you remember, do you remember the fatalities? I do not. I, do I, suck. That. I, suck. I suck at it, man. Yeah, yeah. I got to do it. I tried to get back into playing Mortal Kombat. I couldn't do any of the fatalities. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So Mortal Kombat for Sega Genesis or Mortal Kombat for Super Nintendo? What do you prefer? Because I got no Genesis, argument about this. Man. Yeah, they, I, actually, Genesis. I actually bought both of those when I was a kid, when those came out, because I wanted the blood in the Genesis version. <laughs> Genesis, Genesis is the way, the way to go. Just had the blood, yeah. yeah if you had the six-button controller in the Genesis, is cool. And that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, who's all in here though? Shout out to Bonix. As one was good, man. Let's see. Damn, it's amazing. Brother, what's good, brother. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, I'm just seeing this now. I just thought it was three of us. Now it's like ah, nine and, and nine. nine. That's there, how we got to do there, it. There's nine, nine of us nine here. So. <laughs> yeah, we were waiting on you, brother. But again, we appreciate you hopping in. That's crazy. It's literally off the flight, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's my first time leaving the house in uh in two months. Like it's not like I'm doing this shit. Like this is the first flight I took. And everything i had to go home right and uh i'm like handling some shit real quick just just so i can make this transition smooth because i'm going back to um my lease is up at my house in la so i'm going back to uh, vegas full time for a while so everything's good though man it was just crazy out here this shit is nuts like this is the airport i'll let you see what it looks like yeah Dude, how, how weird is it in vegas having all the casinos closed it's just, you know what, to be real with you, man, I haven't DJed in Vegas like that in the last year. So, um, uh, Vegas is pretty slow, man. It looks weird. It's like ghost town, you know? Yeah, what's the vibe there? For a place that usually has so much energy, it's so vibrant. Like, what is it like you out know, there? No, the vibe is no vibe. Like, my, my roommate, DJ Spare, he posts videos all the time. It's like, there's absolutely nobody on the strip like that, oh, man. Wow. It's dead. You know? Um, I saw a video that Crooked posted out of his window and was like, I hear birds chirping and I never hear birds chirping in like downtown Vegas, which is crazy. Yo, when I tell you it's like, even the sky, the sky, like you can see like this, you can see, you can hear and see everything now. Like this is just nothing going on. LAX is dead. 
It's like nobody at LAX. Um, it's always traffic at LAX. LA, so LA's got some clean, clean air right now. <laughs> yeah, it's like clean, man. <laughs> yeah, fuck uh, up. The air's clean, but we gotta wear masks now. Yeah. I feel like uh, I feel like an asshole being out here, man. I don't like being out here, man. It's like I'd rather be home. No doubt, no doubt. You had to do what you had to do, though, man. We get, we get what, the, what that's like as well, you know. And that's the other you thing know? about getting into DJing. We do it because it's like it helps remind us of what it's like being young and being an, uh, like a, a kid, essentially. You know, just kind of messing around with your thoughts and doing that. But then once you get to this certain level, you know, uh, DJing is, is is a job. You know what I'm saying? We we all basically work through through uh, entertainment through music. So you guys are all based in DC right now, right? Or is it? Is it uh, we're all over the place. Where's who? Who's where? DMV, Baltimore like, like, City, Baltimore City. Yeah, be more. Y'all yeah, all in the DMV area. And um, how is it over there? Like, how is it looking? Like, as far as people moving around and all that, is it still kind of normal? Is it? Oh, it's a ghost I, town, man. It's a ghost town. No, DC is a ghost town, bro. DC. It's same, crazy. Same with Philly. Yeah. It's been kind of weird up here in Baltimore because my wife and I try to go out on Sundays and like walk around the Inner Harbor, just like move our legs, get some exercise, but keep away from people. And the warmer the weather gets, the more people are just getting kind of ballsy. And it's getting to the point where I'm really concerned because there's a lot of people out this past weekend and we were like, we can't really go anywhere without being at harm. So we just kind of called it. I don't know. It feels very strange because like I can look out the window right now and I, I live right next to I-83 and there's no cars and every once in a while you hear like a real loud muffler somebody driving down the highway at like 110 and that's it nothing right. else yeah man like i got in my uber the other day like it was my first time getting an uber in two months and the uber driver like immediately just like, yells at me he's like yo take that fucking you don't have to keep that fucking mask on what? he's like He's like, this shit is stupid, man. Like, there's nobody out here. <laughs> like, nobody's sick. Not a, he's just like frustrated. He's like, I got four kids, and uh, I gotta have four laptops so they can do their homeschool and all this shit. He's just like pissed. Damn. He's like, and he's out here every day, all day. He's just like, he thinks it's a little bit ridiculous. And that's out here in Los Angeles. He was acting like that. So, I don't know, man. I'm, I, I'm waiting in here. Like, got this shit cools off for a while. So we can get back to work, you know. I, I miss. I'm like, I'm happy I got the break because you know we always on our go 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 go. Yep. yep. You always doing gigs and shit, and you know. But at the same time, man, it's, it, it feel good to get back to what we're good at, man, and like making people have a good time and shit, and, and that energy, you know. That's just up. Uh, that's what I want to get back. Like our industry is gonna be the last one to bounce back too. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, at least the at least the side of it that has people at it. Yeah, the club side of it. Not so much the radio side, obviously, because yeah. you're still working. But like the the club side, casinos, it's that's gonna be the last Any, to come back. I, my, I'm curious, just to anything with a business model that that bases people together. You know, I mean, that's so many things, bro. You know, true. Yeah, are all going to to kind of adapt and jump back in like you said uh homeboy in pittsburgh was like yeah they're 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 gonna be out ready to party i mean that's a thought if he knows the people there that i think people out here are gonna be weird i think it's gonna be a little bit of a mix um, you know what's crazy about that is that we're we're the ones that keep everything together when everybody's like out and we're also the people that are keeping things together right now on the internet like with these live videos and shit like sure to entertain exactly yeah and, and, and i think we're lucky enough to to be able to kind of have already been able to be set up for this in terms of we had laptops we have dj equipment with sound cards in them you know we had all this shit we just a lot of us needed to just quickly figure out all right and like aiden you know i had a ton of shit laid around you yeah, know, and, and a lot half of the stuff I'm using now, and again, reminder for you guys at home that are like, I need to buy new stuff. If you do mobile gigs, like you do weddings and stuff like that, you got tons of gear. Just put it towards a new thought process. I'm gonna use it for this, you know, because like being MacGyver, you got to MacGyver everything. You got to MacGyver that. Shit. <laughs> and and it's funny how many people are like, hit you up, like the thing that yo, thank you for live streams. You know, you helped me get through my cooking for the family, or you helped me with my workout sessions. You helped me just, you know. 
just sit outside of my house and just yeah. feel better that you know it's 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 dope feeling though 100 well, i i think the 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 most unique of it all is how all of us as djs especially if you're on like a, a social media platform that has a lot of people that that you know and if it goes way back to people that you've known since like high school or middle school how they're using our stream as a place to connect with a lot of their friends and all of our mutual friends that they haven't even spoken to in 15 20 years because they're they're on your stream watching you dj and they're like yo John, I haven't I haven't talked to you in in 15 years, and it's only because of our stream that they're even connecting. And so, you know, DJs have always, you know, been the kind of people that connect connect people through music, and and now we're just actually seeing it happen in real time in a whole new new way, which is it's pretty dope. I mean, people don't realize that in that first economic package, there was a significant DAO that went to uh, the Kennedy Center. And and I, I thought that was really dope that the Kennedy Center got some of that money because, it, you know, we're 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 spoiled living in D.C. We get to go to the Kennedy Center and see like Nas perform in front of an orchestra with an orchestra. And it's just like, oh, I'm just going to hop down the street to the Kennedy Center. Drive by it before your DJ gig every night. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it, it's like the type of place that like they are, whether it's ballet or opera or or classical music or hip hop or art or photography like they're they're a proponent of the art and and just art culture and i think we're really learning through all this that how important art really is to people when you're when you're in a in a time of despair or anxiety that it's really art that makes people find that find that uh that comfort you know so you know, it's, i'll speak to that for a second too i mean you know it, Creators are kind of sometimes kind of like saviors, you know. What I mean, That's what I mean. being a creative is uh is, is part of that job. But I'm gonna say it like this, you know, it's it's what we're dealing with is is very real, you know what I mean? Like I'm sure it's landed on if you know everybody's doorstep, and if it hasn't, you know, God bless you. Um, but I'm I'm been thinking about things like you know what i'm doing in here on a daily basis what i do for work and i have no i'm i'm in no rush to get back out to do anything for real like i'm gonna be Man. that guy like you know they're perhaps talking <laughs> like if that show goes off or you know like they say like they're planning for it i'm gonna do the show with her and then i'm getting in the car and i'm going back home you know what i mean like i don't even want to get on a plane like that's just me like i'm not ready to be around a whole bunch of people prematurely but, um, you know, I get that people want to get back, get back to it, but, you know, things are real. I don't, and I, I don't want to make a, a, a somber tone here, but, you know, you, I don't wish anybody to have to deal with uh, going to a, a virtual, you know, funeral online, because that's where we're at. And I just dealt with two of them, you know what I mean? So it's like losing family members and, and having to see that in that way puts all the, everything that I'm doing right now, that's us all on the back seat. It's all on, you know what I mean? It takes a back seat right now. So like, don't look to me to be out there, you know. Soon. I agree with you on that one because I, I lost like three people so far with this thing too. And it's crazy. Like, um, I, I, I can, I can agree with you with that, man. Cause I honestly, I'm not somebody that's been big on doing clubs or I, I've done clubs and I've done all that shit. But it's never been really my thing where I wanted to keep doing that shit anyway. So getting a break from it was, was fun. It's been great. And yeah, it comes down to money. But at the same time, health is everything, man. So That's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that one, man, because this shit is scary. I was in Seattle right when they announced that Seattle was ha having the worst fucking pandemic numbers. Like when it was hitting like that. Oh, I, knew Me, it. I was there young and we were in Seattle. Uh, we were there, right? Right. That, our show was like we were surprised our show didn't get shut down because our show was like the same day they announced that shit. The next day was Lupe Fiasco show, and he they canceled his show. I uh, think so that's all. Uh, we was were, that like the weekend of March fifteenth? Yeah, it yeah, was we, like. We did, um, I think uh, Rap and I were out there like like days. Like we left two days after the at the news came out that Seattle was like going through it. Like we were right ahead of it. 
that's crazy. Like you were right there when it happened, and we were right. We ahead. were right. There. Yeah, we went to Portland the next show, and then it was over right after Portland. That's crazy. Wow. Uh, when I flew, I flew to Dubai to with Wiz. Like literally, when we landed, they that's when they can't. That Tom Hanks and NBA was canceled when we landed in Dubai. <laughs> and so my phone went crazy as soon as I land, and they were like, "Yo, Trump canceled flights from Europe because I flew through Amsterdam." So people were like freaking out for me, kind of. Um, oh, so man. I was like, me and I feel like me and Wiz partied on like the heels of everything. The night <laughs> we got there, the the we we um you know we did a club. The morning they canceled the hookah. Imagine they canceled the hookah in Dubai, right? Which is oh, crazy. And people are still like, oh my god. And I'm just like at the mall at, at the Dubai mall, walking around. And there's really on a Friday uh, Friday Saturday night. Um, there's really like nobody uh, at or like a Thursday, Friday, usually the mall's packed, like an international mall and shit. So it was pretty quiet. But we were literally on the heels of it because it was like we flew there. People were like, Tom Hanks got it. You know, if Tom Hanks has it, serious business. <laughs> and so every day they kept canceling shit. And then we flew back and I was like flying there and back. There were people coughing all over me. And dude, uh, like hearing, they probably coughed just as much before when you fly, but now when you hear a cough, <laughs> Right, like, bing, and you just like, ah, you know, yeah, yeah. Kind of scary. But dude, so we went back. I had to land. I had to wait in like three hour CDC lines. Basically, everyone was sitting in the same line, thinking that you know, man, I might get it. So I was quarantined. Uh, it was kind of wild, man. We were literally on the heels of that shit. And yeah, me and Wiz were always like, we called it the last bag tour. You know, literally, it was like, <laughs> everything is closed. Like right when we landed. So it was, uh, was kind of, it was cool, you know. But were were they like pretty much like prepared for everything? Like were they they, had they started Uh, earlier? Because it was like low, you know. They were just I think they were a little bit behind. I mean, you know, U.S. was behind, so yeah, Dubai was behind. Um, so it was like, but people weren't at the mall. Like they, there was definitely not a lot of people in the mall. People were definitely wearing a lot of masks. Um, and the airplane was scary because I was just like, well, I'll probably get it, you know. I mean, you know, spraying my hand for five minutes. Blah, 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 but you just don't know. Yeah. I always keep a, even before all this, you know, I always keep a, uh, especially once you hit the winter months, I always keep a hand sanitizer right by my turntables, like all the time, because people are always coming up, shaking your hands and stuff. And I just, I have to keep putting that stuff on my hands, even be- way before this. But I, the only thing that I can equate to this, and, and I think, if you had to kind of be in DC at the time to know this feeling, but this reminds me of when the sniper was around. Oh yeah. Yo. The DC yeah. Sniper. Oh, that happened like, in my neighborhood growing up, the second shooting at this. Yo, I mean if and if you if you guys are too young that are watching this to remember, in. like just Google the DC sniper and that just was hear like the a, stories. It was like a movie, man. Every yo, day. They made a John movie. Lee Malvo. Yo, I, I remember mean, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the you you have to rethink licking your finger for the fucking records. Uh, yeah, oh my yeah. gosh! Sure. <laughs> like totally, you're just like. Yeah, and that that's what we did. That's what we do, right? So it's like, what else is there besides like the the coin stuff? Nothing. You just we're gonna die from licking our fingers. Hey, look, I don't, you're gonna feel like an asshole on turntables now. Like, <laughs> like whenever I play on CDJs, I I'll lick my fingers and I'm like, what am I doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Yo, speaking of what you were just to coattail on that real quick, if you're the guy that you know you have, like, those sweaty-ass palms, don't be coming up to dap me in the fuck, bro. <laughs> like, come on, man. Y'all hands. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that dude comes like, yo, what's up, bro? You, you go for the dap, and his hands are like... Slime. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck just happened? Like, why did you do that? Like, oh. So I, I, I resorted to, um, you know... and. If you've never been to Heist in D.C., I know a bunch of you have, but the DJ booth is kind of the the centerpiece of the club, and it's it's where they, they've got the biggest VIP table and, like, the table that they sell for the most because they get to be right there with the DJ. And the last week before everything right. shut down, I was playing there, and I was, like, told the manager, Piero, I was like, B, we got to lock this thing up, man. I don't care how much anybody wants to spend money. They cannot be back here tonight. Like, this can only be for me or I'm not playing. I will not come in. And he and he was like, yo, I feel the same way. It's just going to be me and you sitting back there. And I was still so scared to lick my fingers. I took two glasses of water and stuck them by each of the turntables. And I was dipping my, <laughs> I was dipping my fingers into them so that I wouldn't lick my fingers. 
<laughs> but, but wait a minute. How, how how many people are in? How many of y'all are finger lickers? Oh man. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, I say it again. Finger what? Finger, finger lickers. lickers. Oh, our finger. Especially lickers. on vinyl. I mean, like when you're oh, on records, you, yeah. You, you can't. Oh. I'm not DJing with none of y'all. Just putting it out. <laughs> no, especially no. not a, a, a trade night at Heist where we all share the same. Right. Night. We have ten DJs on the set, and like there would be dudes that would come up those on those nights and be like, "Nah, I gotta." I got to switch the records out for my, my records for my, for my 10 minute set. Like I am, t- I'm not touching any of these dudes records. You think Serato could make like any bacterial records and shit. <laughs> oh. Oh. Pick one of those up from the vault in New Zealand. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I, yeah. That's a fire idea. Yeah. OP Miller. I know you're watching somewhere. OP, we need some sanitized free <laughs> kind of records. Actually, I want to piggyback off of that real quick. This is a conversation I've had with a couple of the mobile guys recently. Um, Just keep in mind that anybody who's bringing their gear from point A to point B, going forward from this pandemic situation, we now need to sanitize all of our equipment. But then there was a conversation about microphones and like I'm using one of the wireless microphones I take out to my You got to bring your own now. Now yep. it's going to be one of those, like, you have to have a pop filter or, have or you own. have to have Lysol wipes with you. And every time you hand off that microphone, you better No, wipe forget it, it, man. You got to bring your own microphone now. It's BYOM. <laughs> man. Speaking of artists, do you think artists will start bringing their own personal microphones now? I mean, they always do. A lot of artists I feel like that's already a normal rider. thing, but I don't know. It's rider shit. I'm I don't know whose mouth has been on that shit. I, mean, I, I work with a lot of cover bands in the tri- in the tri-state area, and a lot of the bigger cover bands, they bring their own mics. They're not, like... I would assume larger artists would have their own, like, I mean. Yeah, now, nah, when we were on the road, I mean, rap travels with our own, but, um, you know, DJ mics and stuff, like, I was at the mercy of the club. Uh, but, you know, between the DJs that were on it, like, we we, we, and we were in the middle of the tour and everything. It's like we had the Lysol wipes, and every time somebody got, you know, the next person on, it was wiped down. You know, we even started getting into some of the venues, and the, and the, and the techs were like, yeah, we got – Sound people were like, we, we wiped everything down, we sanitized everything, but we still grabbing, you know, Lysol wipes and, and hitting the mics. And, um, but yeah, it's, I think that's going to be a normal thing now, carrying Lysol wipes in the backpack. You know what I mean? Like, some of those mics were funky smelling too. Uh, oh, never- oh, the mics that stink, yo, those are the oh. <laughs> palatocious, microfocious. Oh, mic, man. Uh, yo, Art, so are you, uh, how are you feeling? You got your, your, DJ tip of the day ready to go? Uh yeah, yeah, I could do All something. right, Gio, you want to you want to give us a little bit of Here, I'm I'll play some. Well, here. real quick, everybody that's like uh tuning in on Facebook, Instagram, uh and YouTube, we have about 30 minutes left, 10:30 right now. So if you still want to join the the chat on Zoom, make sure to go to that link on the screen, bit.ly slash the 9 at 9. Uh big shout out once again. Oh, big shout out to Randy. What up? What up Randy? Uh, we got a lot of people. Wally Sparks, what up? Uh, Inferno was on earlier. You know, um, there's a bunch of people on on uh, on uh, Instagram earlier. But w- what up, everybody, for dropping by? But uh, Art, are you as one? Are you ready? What up? Scratch tip of the day. Scratch. Uh, we got yeah, the DJ. DJ. We got as one's DJ tip of the week. Oh, so, excuse me. <laughs> so just us, the tip, guys. Just just, <laughs> just the tip. Um, so, yeah, I guess real quick, I was just going to kind of base this one off of, um, I guess, uh, especially for those that are maybe just starting and then you're kind of looking at certain certain um, DJs and you're like, man, he's really good on his left. He's really good on his right. I'm only good here. I'm only good there. Me personally, I'm only good scratching. Like I could do really complicated scratch stuff with my right hand on, as the record hand. But um, one thing I can do, I can do a lot of cool uh, fluent stuff on my left too and people ask me how do I practice that I say I don't practice too much on my left scratching but what got me there was the beat juggling so I'm just gonna quickly try to explain a theory or a method that anybody at home uh, you could even be on a controller turntables preferred um, because of the markers but at the end of the day you can kind of do this with any song um, and the theory is I call this the eight four two one pattern and the idea is to basically manually loop the beat without using the loop feature and then you're going to manually do it cut left cut right force yourself to count the backspins and in this case too you'll 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 learn how to find home home is what we call the downbeat in this case so i'll try to just do it and talk while i do it
So we're going to start here. We're going to do eight beats. Ready? So the idea is to do it until you're comfortable enough. Eight, four, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and drop. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and drop. Two, three, four, five. Once you get comfortable with that, we're going to move to four. And one, two, three, four. Four, two, one. And again, just practice eight beats as, as, as clean as you can get it. As soon as you feel like you got that down, break it down to four, two, and then one. The truth is, eight looping eight is actually a little bit harder because the backspin. And you actually have to count your backspins and all that. Um, and what gets harder about the two and the one is just the speed. So the idea is, um, you know, if you could just focus that on any beat, really. Um, usually not something for on the floor, but... Um, yeah, any beat you could do it with and have fun. Shout out to all our students that's on the live stream. If you want to take lessons oh, with bomb, DJ bomb. As One, make sure to visit us at beatrefinery.com. We got locations nationwide. Um, so here's the question to the panel: like, like, what have you guys tech, you know, like on the technical terms, like, like, uh, what, what are you guys working on during this downtime? As far as like technique, skill wise. I can jump right into that because last night I was just feeling particularly uninspired and I'm just working on chirps. I'm trying to get clean up the chirps and get them faster and faster. So just working up the BPMs and partially because of uh, Art's demo last week was talking exactly about that. So technical Sweet. DJ, cool. that's where I'm at. Nice. It's actually kind of funny. Like the whole, re it's funny you brought up Bag in the Box earlier in this podcast when you uh, introduced me. The whole reason I started the whole reason I bought turntables and started buying vinyl was because I heard Bang in the Box 3 by Bad Boy Bill. Bad Boy Bill. Bad so. Boy Bill. And, uh, Dude. So, like, Chicago's always had, like, a, a place in my heart, even before I, you know, before I knew what you, I, I didn't actually travel to Chicago until two years ago when uh, a lot of my friends out there, if you guys know, like, the DJ firm, Cy Young, Heavy, uh, my boy Daly, he used to live in Philly, but now he's out there, uh, Jim, all those guys. But, uh, like, I got my start DJing from that Chicago scene. Like, like, all, like the whole Chicago, like, IHR records, like, all that. Oh, man, that's... And so the whole reason, the whole reason I got into DJing was because Bad Boy Bill was, like, taking this music that typically people would do, like, really long, drawn-out mixes, and he was cutting over it. And I still haven't taken the time you know 22 years later i haven't taken like i have some cuts but they're nowhere as clean as anybody else who's in this this stream and i really need to like i, I gotta go to your beat refinery school and take <laughs> daily lessons to to really i've probably over 22 years taught myself bad habits and <laughs> it's the worst to try to break bad habits when you're cutting or any 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 muscle memory thing when you have a bad habit it's really hard to break yeah man i think that's I'll let Art speak more on that, but I think that's probably the thing that we see the most at the school is trying with guys that have been DJing for a little bit is trying to get them out of the bad habits that they've that they've picked up, you know. Yeah. yeah. And the first step to anything is admittance, knowing that you have maybe a bad habit in a certain thing, realizing like studying like, okay, the majority of the world does it like this. Like the one the one bad habit that I hate, but I can only let one guy have it is a uh, scene. Doesn't he oh, cut that backward scratch? That weird yeah, backward scratch. He, he, put his, he, put his hand, he puts Hamster. his hand at three o'clock, right? And yeah. all this all the scratches he does are technically reversed, but they're yeah, not. He's backwards. He's he goofy goes, foot. He he does his, his scratches live the way people who live stream with their iPhone, <laughs> everything's backwards. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, and that and that is like the wildest thing. And like anybody that's like, yo, I'm gonna do it like I'm like, no, don't do it like that. But he's doing it. I'm like, he's the only guy allowed, bro. 
He's like, the one that gets the pass. Yeah, he got. The, well, he gets the pass. That's kind of like. Uh, I mean, a lot of you guys are baseball fans, and like, I grew up a pitcher, and we all know people who pitch sidearm, which no pitching coach would ever teach you to pitch sidearm. But there's some dope sidearm pitchers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I that, think the scene started scratching like that too. It's not like he just changed it up. He just started yeah. that. Movie. Yeah, yeah, and well, that's the thing. He he kind of made it's a battle DJ. So. I guess what we're calling a bad habit, in terms of you know the way functionality wise, because again, if you put your hand where he places it, forwards is back and back is forward. So teaching somebody starting off brand new, you don't want to confuse them that way, you know. Or it's like when you up, invert your axes on COD. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of ur urban guys do it too, like who are on controllers or CDJs. I've noticed that too. Yeah, yeah. I've de I've definitely seen that. Yeah, yeah which is whatever, it, man. Like I've seen motherfuckers cut up with that shit, so it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. they figure it out, you know. Yeah. But at the I end of the day, freaked out by uh, you know the crossfader being backwards when I see DJs do that. I, Reverse, yeah. Well, hamster like, style. Anybody yeah. who tried to like learn how to scratch watching Cubert's old videos, everything was hamster, right? Yep, it was yeah. hamster, yep. yeah. I think Rag still scratches hamster, right? Rags, Rags well, is a uh, West Coast guy. Yeah. 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 It must be know. a West Coast thing, I guess. West Coast is it's big definitely a West Coast thing. A trick, a yeah. uh, quick history about that, guys. For mixers that don't even have the reverse of the hamster switch, how those guys did it, they kind of accidentally would plug in the right. Yeah, they, they plug in reverse. <laughs> And then the left uh, and to the right, you plug them in reverse so the fader is reversed. If your mixer doesn't have the, the button. Um, yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> there's also I, I feel like in california there's there's actually a plethora of guys that all they do is scratch they don't ever care to mix two records together ever in Yo, any, it, any setting you got a name. all they yeah all they do is scratch all day long the illest if, dudes out there if the, the if scratcher the, battle if yeah. the beat ends, they don't even like, yo, someone's got to restart the beat for me. Like, I, <laughs> I don't even, like, all I do is cut. <laughs> it's, human, it's a whole nother world. I call them human it, metronomes. Is that kind of like, I mean, like New York style DJs too. It's like not a lot of, I mean, the urban guys in your way, not a lot of mixing, a lot of slamming. Yeah, I, I feel like. Uh, That's a stereotype, I guess. I mean. Yeah, but I think, I think there's an art that we've, like, especially the New York guys had. Um, a lot of those guys came up just dropping dropping funk records where it's just you got a drum roll yeah. in the beginning. So so some of that is is based on that there is no intro to so many of those songs. So yeah. you yeah. had to be you had to be smooth with the with just the drop, which is on the which which to me is actually way more difficult than landing a 32, 32 beats. You know, so, it's oh, true. Fun, yeah. it's so much more fun. The energy is so much more there too. It's finding finding a balance between both. I think is is what's fun is is looking at every record as its own kind of centerpiece and how 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 are you going to look at each record as its own identity and how it moves in and out. And some records have multiple ways to move in and out of them, and and some it's just like you just know you've got you've got to actually let that drum roll play. Like you need that hit to come in because that's going to bring the energy to that song. Yeah. So, here's New York style is always about like the break. So dropping the record in off the snare, like a snare roll, yep. uh, yep. it's, it's just notorious in New York. I, it kind, just, I, I uh, kind of feel like ease, man. Like you have that New York, you know, sort of I'm vibe. From New York. I'm, I'm oh, there you go. Like, yeah. yeah. So, so it's like, you know, especially with your routines, man, it's just like you, you bring that like really, really good New York vibe, you know, to, especially now you're in the West Coast. Um, yeah. Are, are you weird, like whenever, like I know we're all from different markets, but like different markets are known for different things and like being in the philly market philly djs were known for one thing and new york were known for one thing but i'm going off on a limb here because like i don't have my thoughts are never like centered but the best set i ever saw that was like a new york style set was uh it was probably like seven six seven eight years ago i went to a uh a mad decent block party up in new york and just blazed it a set and it was one of the dopest sets i've ever heard with yeah. with that very New York style, like no actual mixing, but a lot of just dropping on the one or whatever, and it was so dope. Was he doing a set like like other people's music, or was he doing the Just Blaze Just Blaze DJ set? He was. It, it was definitely a party rock hip hop set. Okay. It was a party rock. Nice. Set. Just Blaze Just Blaze used to play like roller skating rinks and shit back in the day. Yeah. 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 Well, I Nam, I saw him. Uh, I think it was after Z Trip, man. He got on him and Young Guru basically, and Young Guru was kind of his uh, MC. And they kind of went through a history 
of 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 ju- Justin Blaze shit, like you know, and and it was it would be just Blaze just mixing it the way you know he did, but then yeah. you know. Here's a question. So, for you guys that are on tour, um, for for that th- those for those that back artists on tour and whatnot, um, I know that DJing, for one thing, you get into it because um, it's one of those things you can do comfortably at home, practice, do shit that sucks, and then you know work on it till you go out. Right? Were you guys the type of people that like to be? that were used to being in front of a crowd of as many people as you guys might find yourself in front of, or did you guys have to grow into that character persona of a DJ or like, you know, I, I feel like me, it hasn't happened, but like, I'm that guy, I'm like a fist of water. I'd be all like, I'm on stage. Bruh. But like, I know some cats that like, yo, mad nervous. You know, they're like, yo man, like just being on stage is crazy with that many people, you know? I want to answer that first. I can answer it first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah good. <laughs> uh, all right, I started off as a battle DJ first. Before, before I learned how to mix, before I learned how to, like, party rock or any of that shit, I had a crate with, like, 12 records, mm-hmm. mostly scratch records, and uh, fucking just was cutting and entering battles. And then I got into a... Um, I wasn't in a rap group or any shit. I was in a rock band first. I ended up on stage with a rock band. And, uh, like, scratching and shit. Yep, I remember those days. Is this digital or vinyl? This is straight up vinyl. This is like 2003, 2004. Okay. So we um, we met at Vinyl Combat 2004, or we battled yeah. Vinyl so Combat 2004 then, in New York. Yeah. Exactly. So around then, um, yo, don't don't get my car fucked up for coronavirus. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the fucking I need some water call. It's all good. That's the old nah. man wheezy. <laughs> old man wheezy. He's getting old. That's all. <laughs> Now, nah, but um, uh, definitely you gotta uh, you gotta adjust to stage presence like in a different way. Okay. I can tell you that I I was I was like a deer in headlights in the beginning, like scared of shit, like word. Uh, in front of a crowd, and you gotta adjust to it. And then when, later on, like I, I got in a situation where I was DJing for Alfu Ra, and Alfu Ra used to give me like my own uh break where I do my routines, my DJ routines. I just did my battle shit, you know. Right. Right. And then um, later on, I started doing using a microphone, backing them up with the vocals. And Younger May, I pretty much use the same skills now. But with Younger May, I just like I do my routine before our set, and then we mm-hmm. do our set. But it's definitely something I had to grow into, man, because it was it's still it's still something I still deal with. Like I'm not used to completely, you know, where I'm on the mic and I'm I'm scratching sure. and all that it's shit. It's a lot of pressure in my mind. I mean, I look at it. It's like you guys are there because you guys have the the skills to do it and everything has led up to that but at the same time it's like yo it's a lot of pressure. Well, that's a that's a good question for everybody it's like how much like you know like how much do they give you guys like as far as creativity and like you know input within you know like with the shows and stuff i mean i think it really depends on the artists you're working with and and how they want to perceive you because again like you know I started from a mobile background. I was using weddings when I first started. And I just, I literally just fell into this situation where like, you know, I connected with the artist and he's like, yo, we just go on the road. And, you know, you know, there was no beat refinery back then to teach you how to be a tour DJ, this and that. Like I had to learn how to use a mic on the road. I learned how to be a hype man. I learned how to, you know, make edits for the artist we meet to. I learned how to troubleshoot and fly. Like, like there's no school for that. It's like, that like we never trained. And where you, now, Bix? Like, you know, I, I've known you for a long time, and like when you were at the record store days, coming in the shop and getting vinyl, and you know, well, you every, every Friday religiously, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every you were Friday. you were always you were always in the shop helping me keep the lights on, and I appreciate that. Uh, but you know, you so you come from that vinyl background, and but you know, what, shop, what? You, gave, you still gave me? I still remember to this day, <laughs> WMC, whoever the boys on white label. Yeah, the, oh, the promos. You you that copy. Yeah. You got that, bro? Yeah. Kill it guts. Kill it guts. No, it was it was, <laughs> it was the it was like the it was like the crazy like 
promo version of it like wasn't even before the killer cuts it was it was probably what the killer cuts were made off and, and shout out to killer cuts i was always terrified that one day like that was the only place it was like if we don't if we don't pay traffic this week or fat beats this week we got to pay the killer cuts dudes we do not want them coming down to the store <laughs> whatever whatever we want like that the cod we don't ever do no they would even ask me like yo you want terms with your records i'm like, no i'm good i'll just pay for all these right when they come i don't want to ever get tempted and not pay you no way but you you were uh you, you were like one of these dudes that like you said you got thrown in what is like one of the craziest like like situations where you had to like on the spot troubleshoot where you just probably in panic mode dude it wasn't really troubleshoot it was uh, uh well, a couple examples one was we had a, we used to travel with a full band like we had keyboards we had bass we had drummer we had backup singers we had everything running and I remember sound checks for like two hours alone, which were horrendous. Um, during the live show, the MD was running the uh, the click track from a, another laptop and all the sessions and stuff. Ooh. And out of the blue, his stuff fried out. Like it just stopped working. Like the artist is talking to the crowd. And then he looks at me, he's like, yo man, my shit's not working. And so like quickly I had to like pull out of my, go out of my backpack, find an old hard drive, load up the songs all within like a minute and a half and like basically run the entire band from from my my laptop, which was crazy because then they had no access to like the in ears, their sound oh, was kind of off, and like, we were just kind of like just hoping we all sounded in sync and stuff. Oh, going yeah, back, I, I feel you. like I've saved. Uh, Wiz doesn't know the amount of times that I've saved the oh, show. Man. <laughs> <laughs> he has, he Talk your shit. Like, uh, <laughs> was like, and, and it was like you know fucking poetic, really, as a DJ sometimes, you know. Yeah, and, uh, but that's what you're there for. You know? Yeah, yeah. It, it is yeah. a high pressure thing, you know. Back to what you're saying about like jumping into, you just have to. I mean, you're forced into it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But as yep. soon as I like get on the mic or say something, I feel like that's when you know you have control. What? And I understand that like uh, agony of a DJ. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's hard to be up there or whatever. Well, but, well what's um, what's uh, what's everybody's horror stories? Like uh, like well, your worst stories? experience oh, on, yeah, on I, tour? I have probably the one of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime all the audio cuts out, like when the PA system goes down and nobody knows what's wrong. No, no on, I'll, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll go first. This is really bad. This was 2010. We did uh, the Jingle Ball show in, uh, in Madison Square Garden, New York. Oh, whoa! It, it was like Bieber, it was Pitbull, Taylor Swift, um, Akon. Back when he was doing his thing, um, it was just. Grand. It was amazing. The set, the 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 artists, the bills, which is is unbelievable. Packed house. We jump on stage, and I don't know if you guys ever ever had this issue where like, if you're using Serato and then on the needle, if it runs out of time, it jumps automatically into internal mode. Internal recovery. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't paying attention because I was all living in the moment. Like, yo, what the fuck? Like, we're here. We're doing this the fucking shit runs out and then it jumps into internal mode. And again, that's the first time it ever happened in Madison Square Garden, jumps into internal mode. And then it, the song goes from from zero to like plus 17. Oh. Like, oh. Yeah, I was going to say there's two. It could, it could go to internal and be normal or it can go to internal and shove that shit down or up. <laughs> uh, and I don't know what, what the fuck happened. Because again, that never happened to me before. Damn, son. Poor guy was fucking the song was originally like at like 108 he was singing it at like at 124 126 oh my God. <laughs> dude i shit myself i was like fuck man there goes my career this is never gonna happen ever again <laughs> fucking i wrote the most hateful email to serato the next day <laughs> no actually i think i was sitting at the bar drunk that night because i was so pissed off i wrote the most angry email to serato like what the fuck are you guys doing with this stupid shit like <laughs> You're at the garden, bro. Madison Square Garden sold out, and then <laughs> this shit happened. See, yeah, now we can all, we, now we can all just text Sonny James. <laughs> oh man, they got the bat line. The Blame it on the back line. Yeah. Yo, you know what the worst, <laughs> the worst Serato glitch is for me? And it doesn't happen so much anymore. I think they finally kind of got under wraps, but I'm sure we've all experienced this glitch. It doesn't matter what kind of DVS you're using, but you'll get like a USB drop, and then all of a sudden. Every movement you make is like, like five hundred milliseconds behind. Oh, oh yeah, I hate that. Oh. 
the bad, delay. Yeah. 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 Oh, and but... The only way to fix it is to shut Serato down and reopen <laughs> it. it. But if you're like in the middle of a show, it you always can't happens do that. in the middle of the show. Well, That's the problem. Again, here's my quick workaround, guys. I talked to Chris about this the other day. If especially if you're hooked up to like say a DJM S9 or something in the sound card, open up. If your 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 Serato starts fucking up, open up another program. For me, I like a very basic one. Strip down VLC. I open up VLC. Yeah. I take a track. I put it in VLC. I play it through there through the sound card, the S9. You don't unplug it from the computer, but you do. You do close Serato out, and then. Yeah. And then open it back up, and hopefully by the time that song is not over, you can get back on. That's what ah. so the the S nine is works too. Whatever. And the S the S nine in particular has an issue where if you get like a in a, any venue where there's a power surge or a loss of power, it'll it'll trip it into that half beat latency yep. mode. And so oh. what what I've what I've learned to do if it ever happens is. You don't have to actually shut down Serato. You can just shut down the mixer. So basically what you do is you echo out and you and you shut the mixer down really quick and let the crowd be like, whoa, and then you turn it back on. And the first thing you're gonna get is your microphone. And so then you just hype the crowd for a second and get them like, you want some more you want? And then you just drop something and you better make sure you have a banger. And, and then mm -hmm. people will have no idea that it even happened to you. So it's, you know, you, you can certainly, uh, you know, most of this is trial by error uh, th that we've learned through these horror stories that happen to us right on stage or at a show that you have to fix it right then. Um, but, you know, to, to me, that that is something I don't think the program will ever be able to to solve. It's it basically happens from when there's a power surge or a lack of power going to the unit and it just it trips the whole thing. And it's it's the worst the worst thing ever i started when i would do uh like really like bix and bix and i know specifically do a lot of kind of i have to sign nda sometimes for some of these gigs that i do that i'm not going to tell anybody where i'm at and when you're at somebody like that's house or that their private event i bring a an uninterrupt, uninterrupted power source so that, the same thing so that if if any time the the venue goes down you got like 15 to 20 minutes of power that's only powering up your 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 DJ set and your speakers, and and that way you know at least you have peace of mind that you're not going to get just kind of shitted on right at, right out of nowhere because that because everybody always is going to say it's the DJ's fault. The, oh, the, everybody looks at us what. right away. No oh yeah, what. the the club could have forgot to pay the power bill and it's like oh the DJ forgot to pay the power bill. <laughs> Damn asshole. The dude that forgot to pay the power bill lets everybody look at you. And he goes, yeah. It's yeah. probably him. And then, and like, we hide behind our turntables. We like slowly. <laughs> got to point at somebody. <laughs> got to point at the lighting guy. <laughs> the bartender spilled a drink on the mixer. <laughs> no, I will I will say that's that's one thing I've noticed. Um, and I'm sure you guys teach it at Beat Refinery that a lot of younger DJs uh, – didn't have to go through the vinyl days of putting yeah. pennies on head shells, shit, like, like real, like real ghetto fixes, like real, like I'm gonna, like, the worst case scenario situations. A lot of younger DJs are very pampered with the gear that we have now, and they don't know how to troubleshoot at all. Like, you don't know the first troubleshooting. Like, you know, there's always a, there's a. There's like a, a list of troubleshooting things when something goes wrong. A lot of people don't know that. They don't know how to. They don't know how to set up their gear, let alone mm -hmm. troubleshoot. Well, so, some of our locations, you know, they we do have turntables, so they do get that experience. You know, um, but you know, it's up to them, like what what they choose where yeah. to go from there. But we definitely, we definitely, you know, always push the turntables on them, like you know, early on. Yeah, I mean, you have guys now who are just used to just coming in, not even with headphones, they just come in with two USB sticks and that's it. Yep. They don't understand like how to plug something up or whatever. They're just like, all right, let's need to put my USB in and start playing. Yeah. Call that the Euro Trash setup. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> that's what they call it. I, not, not me. He's like, yo, I got the Euro Trash setup today. Boop. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> a face when you're when you're out with Rhapsody, how many uh, how many people are on stage with you when you're when you're out there? Is it just uh, is it a band or is it just a uh, um, no, it depends on the occasion. Um, you know, so like these, these past few tours, um, it's just been me and her, you know, I mean, she'll have, uh, like on this one, she'll have a, um, label mate, Heather Victoria came out and was like, you know, did a lot of 
they have a couple of songs together and then she was on stage doing background but um you know when she brings the band out it's usually something where i'm i'm completely not involved actually you know what i mean like whether it's a tv performance or you know somebody that finally came through with a check that can cover all of that and she wants to like step it up and bring it you know to that next level but we're we're and usually for something like that ninth wonder will step in and 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 do that um but it's getting to the point where um working in the band is going to be become a regular thing so like now it's on me to like you know really start digging into ableton and you know supporting her in that sense like right now it's like straight up djing you know for her you know it's running the tracks like you guys talk about like right. horror stories. I was in the wrong crate one night. Like we had different things for different cities. Like she'll want to drop different instrumentals for different songs. <clears throat> Part of that is my, you know, input too. Like it would be dope if we did this here. When we're here, we can do this. So I have my arrangements. And one night I was just, and some tracks were even like TV tracks were even different. And I was just completely playing out of the wrong crate. And I realized <laughs> that like three songs in, it wasn't kind of like something didn't sound right. You surprise her every song. It's like, <laughs> damn, that's not the. Damn, that's not yeah, the- but uh, no, I mean running running the band is 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 just something that it depends on the gig. If they can afford for her to bring the band, then she brings the band. But you know, you're lucky you, that you weren't working for James Brown because you would have been uh, working for free for about a month. Yeah, all the fines you would have had. Yeah, <laughs> it would have been over. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right, we got uh, we got time for just a little bit more, but let's get to Sean Jay's tech tip of the week real quick before we uh, let everybody give yeah, their we're, last. We're pieces. about to wind down here, so let's do one more segment. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this super super fast. I was gonna do something about streaming, but I wanted to kind of change directions because it's very topic specific. Um, up to this point, I've been really trying to pay attention to what's going on in the live streaming world, but I think that with the panel we've got here as well as. Uh, just kind of talking about troubleshooting and recovering from an error. I want to show you guys something real quick. So um, years ago, I worked for a uh, independent Baltimore record label called Mania Music Group. I was the tour DJ for them. Nothing like the, the, the guests we have on this week uh, as far as like size of shows and number of stops or anything like that. But my job was to be the guy who was anticipating what could go wrong being able to troubleshoot things really quickly. And then I learned about, hey, you have to have like an instant replay 3000 or something like that. Something that's a hardware thing that plays the sound if something goes wrong. So they're hard to find. It's kind of a legacy item. This company right here, 1010 Music makes this one in my device. Back you got one? There we go. We're talking about you this. You have man. one in your, it's hard to find, but it's in your back pocket. Here we go. Boom. So this thing right here, you can see it fits in my hand. That, Black Box is basically a hardware version of what the MPC used to do, as well as it has a clip mode like Ableton. So what you can do, this thing costs three ninety nine, and there's a whole lot of people. Can you show the output to that? Can you show the back panel of that? Yeah, everything on the back is uh, eighth inch ins and outs. It's got MIDI in and out, clock, uh, uh-huh. one input, three outputs. But the reason I wanted to show this is because as somebody that's on a stage, if your laptop goes down, something like that, you should always have a backup source of audio. The reason I got this is just like we were uh, talking about with Chris and the NDA gigs, like those high dollar gigs where you can't risk having something go wrong. What I did is in the micro SD card that you uh, plug into the front of it, fit it, whatever size micro SD card you want on there, I have a whole bunch of just recovery tracks. So if something goes wrong, it touch screen, touch the screen real quick. It gives me as much time as I need to figure out what's going on. And I've got an eighth inch cable going to the aux of my mixer. If I'm bringing all the speakers and everything, I'll send that same eighth inch out quarter inch on the other side and plug it directly into my speakers. So that gives you, if you have to restart your computer, if you've got to close out Serato, that's my solution. Art was saying use VLC. Chris is saying, hey, turn the power off, turn it back on, grab the microphone first. There's lots of ways, but I think when it comes to anybody who's aspiring to do shows, anybody who's aspiring to do tours, your job has to be to anticipate tech problems. Most of the time is buying time so something else can get fixed. This is a great solution for it. It's cheap. You don't have to worry about trying to find a couple thousand What is that piece. called again? What's the name of it's that? It's called the Black Box by 1010 Music. I met those guys out at NAMM. I bought this thing before I ever met any of them. They made this uh, for the for the like hardware uh, modular synthesizer people, and that's why the inputs are eighth inch. Yeah, I'm saying, what did they design it for? 
they designed it so it works with modular synths, but because you got the micro SD, you can do all of the same things you would do uh, with Ableton having clip launch mode. You can do sample chopping, Ooh. you can do MIDI programming, MIDI mapping. You literally, you can do anything you can do in Ableton on this thing without a computer. Nope. It, can we add on to that? And if nobody wants to buy extra hardware, like the one thing I always keep in my DJ bag is an eighth inch to RCAs. And I always keep mixes on my phone, and everybody has a phone in their pocket. So if I ever have an issue where, like, I don't have to turn off the mixer, but I have to, like, restart Serato, I'll have eighth-inch to RCAs into whatever mixer I'm playing. And I have, like, a multitude of mixes that are on my phone that I can play in an emergency. Perfect. Nice. Yeah, man. I've, I've always gone that route myself, just of having that as a, as a – really easy backup to start the start you can do that over your, your laptop too if you plug it into your into your, Dude, your macbook you know yo, ease, yeah. i used to, I I used to do that stuff, with yeah. um before yeah. mixers before serato mixers started putting two usbs in so we could easily switch djs uh what i would do and like other dj friends of mine would be like how the fuck did you just do that i would always have again in my dj bag i always keep that eighth inch to rca cable and I, oh. if if something if we had to switch DJs, I would just open up iTunes and I would load whatever track I was gonna mix into next, and I would I would zero out the uh, the BPM on the turntable, and then I'd open the next track I'd play in iTunes, and I'd play the iTunes track through the eighth inch of the mixer mm-hmm. back into the mixer. And I literally used the record that was playing to mm. adjust it to beat match it, <laughs> and then wow. just come come out of that into iTunes, and then that gives the other DJ time to unplug the USB, plug in the plug in their USB, and then they can mix out of the iTunes record into their set. Nice, so, I like dude. that. Or just, yeah, to, or, or just, to, or just bring the Gemini twenty second sampler with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but, that, uh, that's actually something people would do too. With um, <laughs> I forget who showed me Blue just rolls. the first. Yeah, the, I, I Blue it was roll, some. Yeah. I forget what touring DJ it was that I was playing with in the Bahamas, uh, during one of my spring break things, but what they did was that it was a, a, a Pioneer nine hundred, and they just did that loop roll. But they put the they put the wetness all the way up, so it just stayed. And they did like an eight beat, an eight beat like beat, and that was it. And then you could you could take as much time as you needed. That's what you used to do with like Pioneer FX units, or or even like dude, just, the just on the eight hundreds, you know. Or the yeah, dude, I had that thing. I it's downstairs somewhere. That that thing that Bad Boy Bill used. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's eleven o'clock right now, so um, we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, so everybody on the panel, all of our special guests, um, can you all just like l- let us know what you guys are are are, are, are basically you know like, promote what what you got going on next? Let's start it off with Aiden Scott since his name starts with an A. <laughs> <laughs> Alphabetical. All right. I mean, I'm not doing much right now in Philly right now, except for I've been doing three live streams a week that are scheduled uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, it's a brand I'm trying to build here in Philadelphia called Funked, FNKD. The uh, Instagram is at FNKD Philly, if your listeners want to follow it. Um, but what I'm trying to do is during this downtime, I actually started this before the quarantine, but uh, the music that really makes my soul happy and like I don't dance, but what makes me want to dance is like all the old funk vibes and disco vibes from, you know, really our parents' eras. But there's a lot of new stuff that still takes those vibes and brings it to current day sh- stuff. Unfortunately, in America, that scene isn't very big. So in the UK and in Canada and other countries, they're really big on ghetto funk, uh, glitch hop, uh, I, like all the breakbeat stuff that's still around, like producers like A Skills and Father Funk and Sticky Buds and Fibes. So Funk is essentially a party live stream podcast that I've been doing that I'm trying to introduce people in the states more to that scene, and uh, that's that's what I'm doing. So if you want to like tune into the Funk streams or 
subscribe to the podcast. Whatever podcast app you use, you can just type in FNKD, and it should come up. Thank and you. That's all. Yeah, I'm gonna check that. That's that's my right up my alley. I play well, a lot of a lot of that. Well, stuff we gotta too. do something together then. Yeah, for sure, man. Absolutely. Bix this ensues. Bix, what you got going on, brother? Mic three, microphone. You muted. muted. Sorry, guys. Just some unscheduled live sets whenever I feel like jumping on. Um, I think honestly, with this downtime, just uh, dusting off the old production skills and getting heavily back into that, man. I think that's something I've been just lagging on for the longest time and was never really focused on it because it's again just the whole timing thing and i think that for me that's a one big thing i'm trying to uh get back into but other than that just hope everybody the best and stay strong and positive all right that's what's oh, up, yo, man. yo all of you guys who uh who are broadcasting on twitch like please drop your names because i'll follow you and, and like i'll even host you on my channel <laughs> but like if you're on twitch uh i'm just dj aiden scott on twitch so twitch.tv forward slash dj aiden scott Cool. But I, I, I try to share the wealth. Like I try to host and or share as much dope content as I see people doing. Nice man. Nope. Thank you for that. That's that's what's up, man. At this time, and we all have to really bond together as much as we can, especially especially us the guys that are, you know, looking looking to find that outlet. And you know, that's really the, for a lot of people the, that is truly the only outlet right now. Yep. Uh, Bonix, what you want to tell the people? Hey, uh, well, I'm on the radio every day in Minneapolis. You can get a Go Radio, Go Hip Hop Radio app or GoRadioMen.com. Um, if any of you guys have mixes or want to mix on the station, feel free. That'd be dope. I'm Let's on... get it popping, bro. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Wiz, Wiz just dropped a um, Wiz dropped a new album called The Saga of Wiz. So I'm excited to hopefully nope. get back on the road. So that's cool. I mean, I'm always creating, man. I'm I'm about to move apartments, but. And this is kind of my setup right now and I'll like dress it up and make it all cool. But it's been fun, man. You know, at first I was like, I wasn't sure about the streaming and then I was like, all right, let me just not think about it. And so that's been fun just to like figure out, I'm, you know, uh, I've been shout out to my guy PDC. He's been helping me figure out OBS and all that stuff. So that's really, Yo, Bonix, uh, if you have any Bonix, you've talked to me like several times in the past two days. If you ever have questions, hit me up. Yeah, man. Yo, I got also, a question about OBS. Definitely. Yo, but can we talk about Ease? He went from an airplane to a studio. I know. <laughs> Within an hour. Yeah. <laughs> went home with Ease, bro. Within an hour. He got off the plane and got <laughs> in mean, the house. Right. It was it was Ease, it was incredible. That was a that was incredible. I was like I was like watching you go through chaos to peace. Like <laughs> yeah. Yo, look yeah, look at like so right now. He's so happy. Girl wins, man. We're gonna it have to we're gonna, gonna have to edit this on the like, video. Yeah. I just ordered a Porsche on Toro. I'm like, who the fuck gonna let you drive that shit, bro? This dude was trash. But whatever. It was fun. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, I'm I'm happy to be back here. Uh, I'm working on. Uh, I got a record label now, so I'm working on some music, like original music, instrumental albums, experimental shit with scratching and um vocals and stuff. And um, I got an R&B artist named uh, Cell. I got another one named Evelyn Psyche. I got my brother, Trap Gang Nino. He's also on my label. So we're putting out a lot of music this nice. summer. And uh, we're playing out do some festivals also in the fall. And hopefully this pandemic ends soon so I can finish the Young M.A. tour because uh, that tour was sold out and it was dope. The energy was dope, but also the money was great. So. Yep. So, What's the name uh, of the label? Yeah, I'm right. On my record label is Ease Up Music. Nice. Nice. So, I like that. Yeah. So I'm excited about that, man. And like you saying, like Bonix was saying about going live, like at first I was like, oh man, this is like kind of whack. But I played the best fucking R&B live set the other day, man, that I didn't even think I had in me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I would have never done that if it weren't for the pandemic. Yeah. I was like, it was like 430 in the morning. I just started playing like in Vogue, like slow jams and shit and just like fucking ballads and Craig David's (laughs) B-sides and shit. I'm just like, it was just inspiring, man, to, to to do it for, even though, like, we do it for a living, but to do it, like, for no reason, just, like, for therapeutic reasons, it's, like, it feels good, you know? Do you have a, yeah. do you have a routine? That, good. Yeah. Do you have a tap, routine tap that you're going to put shit, up? You know? That's what's oh. up, man. we got to keep up for that Ease Up label. I can't wait to see that. That's, it that's Does Ease Up have, a, like, an Instagram? Is there an Instagram account? Not, not yet. I got a hashtag, but Ease Up Music hashtag, but I, um, I'm working on all that. The website, everything's being, being worked on. I hate I hate being the coming soon dude, but that's what the fuck it is. Right dude, now. it's hard. Like there's so much <laughs> there's so much marketing you have to like pay attention to 
anymore. Like I, I run three Instagram accounts and like three Facebook pages. It's Yeesh. there's so much. Yeah, yeah. it's it, this was it's dope, man. Like it's fun. It feels like something new. I'm starting like when you first started being a turntable. This is like yeah, it feels like that. Like being on the road with Young and Main. She's 100 percent independent. And um, I've been up to YouTube with her. I went to Google with her, and I just like see her do everything from the ground up, and it's like helping me in my situation. You know. That's so. what's up, man. Well, thank you for being on the show with us, man. We're gonna have to get you back too. Uh, we got lots of lots of other topics that we'd love to chat with you about. Face, brother. What what uh, what can the people? What can you tell the people about you? How to how to follow you and find you? Uh, you can find me um, at DJ Face Music, uh, as I say on the radio, spell properly. So there's no Z. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, you know, I've been doing the streaming thing, uh, pretty much Wednesday through Sunday. Um, times vary mostly at uh, Easter Standard Time, like seven, eight o'clock at night, and then on the weekends it's three, three to five. Um, Magic app. If you guys are, I don't know if you can see that. It's yep. his logo, Magic One Hundred Two Point Three. 102. 3. You can download that and uh, check out the mixes on the air. Um, I got the machine behind me, you know, making beats all the time. That. So uh, kind of locked in um, uh, with uh, Raheem Devon right now. We've been nice. working on a lot of things. I got a song out with him on his last album, if you haven't heard it, on the Love Reunion. Right. Kissed by the Sun. So, you know, everything from hip hop to Afro beat, whatever you need, I'm working on it. So that's that's really it. Beats, streaming, and radio. That's awesome. Yep. Catch this guy on Netflix too, man. Rhapsody's uh, episode, man. Yeah. I was watching him. I'm like, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on Netflix, huh? on that. Hey, uh, real quick, shout out to Ease, man. That that don't rush the DJ, man. That was super clean and fire cut. Yeah. There, <laughs> Thank you, brother. Sick. Yo, that dude, was a sick guys, video. Guys, no, guys, yeah, that don't me. rush channel was fire. Thank you, man. Yeah. Wait, which one did Ease do? I didn't see that one. I did the Don't Not, Rush Me one. Yeah, he was um, part of that with like Jazzy um, Jeff and all of them. Yeah. Oh, with the, with the the one Jeff did. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I was on that one. It was dope. Yeah, I just so. put out, oh, yo, another thing I forgot to tell you guys, man, because um, everybody's talking about where they're streaming at right now, and I'm streaming also. Uh, I'm switching over to Twitch also, so right. hit me on Twitch. At yo, DJ Ease, if, if you have any questions, hit me up about OBS or. Yeah, like, I got mad questions. Work on your overlays, I'll, shit like that. Yeah, I need I need help with all that stuff, so I'm gonna be, definitely be in touch with you about that. Word. And I also just drop. I'm gonna send you guys the record. If you send me an email, um, I just did a song. I got a song out with DJ Paul, Three Six Mafia. Oh, nice, but, nice, but, nice. Yeah, me, me, him, and Yellow Wolf. So I'm gonna send you guys. Ooh, that record. That's dope. Yo. That's dope. Well, thank you, everybody, our special guest for coming through this week. Uh, that's gonna be a wrap. That's it for the nine at nine. Um, make sure to come back and see us every Thursday night, starting at nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can watch the replay of the show on our Facebook and YouTube pages at Beaver Refinery. Uh, also, once again, we, we now offer virtual online DJ lessons. So for all of you all want to learn how to mix, scratch, and, and make music, visit BeatRefinery.com. Everyone watching at home, don't forget to click that share button if you like what you saw tonight. Um, next week's episode, we, are, we got a good episode. We are blessed to have five Red Bull 3 style national champions discussing their thoughts on DJ competitions and DJing in general. So our special guest for next week will be DJ the homie DJ Trace. We have Ooh, DJ hey. DJ Big Ones, um Trentino, Trentino. All, all former US champs. Uh we Wait, have... do you guys have a step stool for Trentino? <laughs> <laughs> wow. We'll, we'll remember that. Uh, we also go in global international so we're going to have Italy's champ Italy Italian champion DJ Delta and the Ooh. current reigning Ooh. Canadian champion DJ Licks and uh, you know definitely be curious to know what she thinks about the Red Bull 3 style world finals getting postponed and possibly canceled so that's going to be a good episode so tune in we'll catch you all next week stay safe stay healthy signing out guys peace out yo peace, peace, peace. Guys, peace. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. appreciate y'all been amazing. Oh.